What's up, guys? So, right now, we're working with a very, very black screen. No worries there. Um, the live show is going to start in three minutes. I just wanted to test out if everything is working properly, if you guys can hear me okay. And, yeah. Let me know in chat if I need to turn up or down the water, uh, the water volume, the sound volume. It's, it's, it's already getting goofy, guys. It's already getting goofy. <laughs> so anyway, I've got um, a couple of my friends over. So you've seen, you, if you've followed the live shows, um, you, you know who these people are. So this is Suzanne and her husband, Lawson. They're like two of my close vacation buddies. Um, I went to Japan with them most recently, and we're going to be uh, part of the group that's going to, to Vietnam uh, early next year. So that should be good. Fan got a bird. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's like you're still here. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so Lawson's over there. He's uh, fixing us some beverages. I was thinking about um, kind of doing like a, a fall themed, uh, like a beer tasting thing of sorts because we always uh, do the beer thing together. Uh, I, and unfortunately, I didn't really find a lot of the autumn themed stuff anymore. Usually, there's like a ton of pumpkin related stuff, but apparently, we're already into Christmas. So right here, I've got. This is called Hoppin' Frog's Christmas Ale. This is the Frosted Frog. So Hoppin' Frog is like this uh, Akron brewery that I'm very fond of. I've always been very fond of this. And since Lawson and Suzanne are from Michigan, I got some, some Dragon's Milk, which is, what is it, New Holland? Yes. Yeah, New Holland Brewing Company, because these guys are from that neck of the woods. So hopefully you guys have your own... Uh, your own adult beverages or just beverages if you if you're not into that whole thing and we can get going soon we can get going soon here uh lou ray do you like ipas if so what's your fave i'm not an ipa guy i'm just not like i don't get it but do you guys like ipas yes and then the new thing is the new england ipa or juicy ipas have you had any of those no are these like the sour things they're not really sour they just they're like a little bit <clears throat> I don't know, what would you say? Like cloudy? Yeah. And uh <laughs> double and triple IPAs. Oh, man. Or quadruple IPA. I think we have had a quadruple IPA from New Holland, which was a bit intense. A mad, 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 mad hatter. Hmm. I don't know. That does not sound like my thing. I don't know. But like there's I mean most of these these breweries, they have like tons of different types of IPAs. All right, it is two o'clock. Uh, two, please, you lost the stream. Everything looks good on my end, guys. Hopefully, you can, you can we can reconnect. What you're drinking. Okay, so what we're drinking right this... You know what, I'm gonna start the live stream, okay? Here we go. And we're starting. <clears throat> Hopefully, my audio is still working. We are going with uh, sipping out of sight chocolate sherry, and this is uh, an imperial stout. <laughs> People are like, "No, it's it's all black." It's like, "Yeah, I know." It's <laughs> yeah. So, well, <laughs> well, no, I think Lawson said that they might be having they might be loading difficulties. Is there? No, everybody's like, you're good. You're oh. good. So real quick, uh, thanks for the Patreon crowd. You, you see your names uh, throughout the broadcast. You guys will get, get shouted out once more. Um, I'm not going to be doing as much explaining as far as, you know, how these live sales work. But basically, if you're curious as to how to purchase anything or even how these things work, titlegardens.com slash live. And um, on the lower, I guess, left of the screen, You'll occasionally see um, just, some, just some helpful tips, like how much is shipping, things like that. But, uh, oh, hey, I, I think I already missed a super chat. See, it's, it's going to be a fiesta, isn't it? So thank you so much for the super chat. Lee Tate, 499. I see you. 
I see you. Like I, I, I before the show started, I said I apologize in advance. I'm gonna be missing all kinds of chat. I'm gonna be missing all kinds of questions. So we're just gonna have to go with it, guys. We're just gonna do it live. Oh, oh, this. <laughs> oh, that was way more challenging than I thought. <laughs> have you have you tried this already? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It's pretty good. I think so. I'm getting yeah. a lot of cherry from it. Mm -hmm. It's like cherry chocolate martini sort of thing. Cherry flavored things always make me think of like cough syrup when I was a kid. It kind of tastes like cough syrup. You're right. <laughs> it, now that you mention it, it's very, it's very syrupy. But it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I can handle that. <clears throat> yeah, two please. Good. So you figured out it was your internet. Shut up and drink, Van. Thanks. Thanks, Casper. <laughs> Every time a zoanthid is on screen, you have to drink. Um, that's going to be a little rough. It's going to be a little rough. You know, I should also check the uh, the chat that's happening on Facebook Live. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delegate that. I'm going to check that. Yeah, if you like. So you don't have to like uh, to watch the video or anything. We can just keep keep posted on like any, any kind of comments. How do I do that? Do I click on this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe like the actual comments will start start showing up. Maybe? I have it. I have it going on mine. Oh. Then you okay. <laughs> um, I've had Dark Horse from Michigan before. So good. I've I think I've had Dark. That's a brewery, right? Dark Horse. Yeah, it's in, in Michigan. Michigan. Yeah. I think that um in Marshall I think <laughs> near Kalamazoo. Oh, I like keep hitting my beak. Uh, so I don't know how long I can wear that mask. But we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll put it back on here and there. Harkins Aquatics okay. So who is our guest? So these are just two uh friends from from my college days. Um one of them is Lawson who's off screen currently. And this is Suzanne his wife and they are my regular vacation buddies so um we recently not recently like last year we went to japan this almost, year almost exactly a year ago yeah almost like exactly a year ago we were in japan <laughs> we're going to be going back to to vietnam through japan um yeah and we were trying to like book other vacations that that may that went through different phases of didn't work out <laughs> just but, today like, yeah had about three different vacations i think yeah Oh well, it'll happen. So, is this the third annual Halloween stream or second? I think it might be the third or fourth, actually. I've done a lot of Halloween. You can go by uh, your costumes. Yeah, you can go by the costumes. So, like the the last one was right around. Um, well, no, the the last one was the Aquaman one, which is going to be one of the toughest uh, toughest costumes to to outdo. I think that one was an inspired one. Uh, previous to that, I think that I was planning on dressing up as a shark, but the shark costume was like a full body getup, and it was ninety degrees that day. I think for some everyone reason. wore the shark costume at one point in time. I think so. Yeah. So basically, to be on camera, you had to like you know put on some sort of some sort of costume, and so like th that shark rotated in and out. It was just like okay, we're gonna pass out from overheating. So. And then you also had the you had your pirate. Yeah, we we had the pirate squid, squid thing. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think maybe. You, I feel like you had one maybe before that, but I think that the you started wearing that during the shark episode so that you could be festive, but yeah. the shark was just too much. It was just too hot, yeah. So you kind of two years in a row did the pirate squid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. So that's what, this is the fourth then. Trudasnid asks, what's the spread on the type of corals we'll see? You're going to see a little bit of anything, uh, a little bit of everything, Tridacnid. Um, there's going to be SPS. There's going to be LPS. There's going to be some some soft corals. You're seeing uh, some zoas here. Seventeen seconds between in favor of Facebook today. Oh, good to know. The uh, if you guys didn't know, like the the, the stream timing um, is never in sync between YouTube and Facebook. So it looks like Facebook is a little ahead currently. Sometimes they they catch you catch up to one another and stuff like that oh man the beak on that black curl looks like it's got to be at least 10 inches long it's close yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
nice Halloween font. Yeah, it makes it a little bit harder to read, but I'm going with it too. Um, there's actually a lot of, of Halloween related uh, like production value going on in this show. Uh, Matthew Klett, are there Blastos? Yes, there will be a few. Not many, um, but uh, like right now, we're, we're growing out a whole bunch of really nice ones. They've been selling like hotcakes recently. So yeah, Dan is a unicorn bird. <laughs> Yeah, to have it on my face, like right now, uh, it feels like <laughs> it interferes with your drinking. Yeah, it in it interferes with my drinking, right? But worse yet, this whole mask is like resting right on my eyeballs. Like, like my eyes are literally the whole only thing holding this mask in place. So, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> Be, be a little selective in, in how much I wear it. Every blaster you take a sip, might be like three sips, but sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, okay, so Jake Bentley's asking, how is the new building coming along? Uh, do they come finish the let? No. Uh, the building is making progress. No question it's making progress, but it's that, that limping to the finish line part. That's always the, the frustrating issue. There's probably less than four hours left of electrical. I have no idea when that's gonna get done. There's probably less than one hour of septic. Who knows when that's gonna get done? Like, so it's just like a mixed bag of little bits of work that has no timetable whatsoever. But for the most part, we're, 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 on, we're on pace to be kind of late, but it's all right. It's all right. I'm going to be doing a... Eyes wide shut. Yeah. Did someone actually say that? Yes. Yes. Thank you for getting the reference. This is this is the, the creepy one percenter upper crust cocktail party. <laughs> so Lawson, you're going to put on the, the mask and get into frame? Or yeah. at least just make it like a, yeah. like a passing cameo? Yeah, I feel like Lawson has the best eyes wide shut look. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Harkins Aquatics are the tanks ordered. Yes, they're ordered. The lead time is quite long, so they're uh, expected in April, and we have to go pick them up. Has anybody heard of a photosynthetic blanophilia? I have not. I always heard all of those are non-photo, but I could be wrong. I I've, I've, haven't seen any for a really long time either. Years. With paleothoas, do all of them have palytoxins in them? Not necessarily. It's kind of unknown uh, because not all zoos have them. I've been looking for people eater pally, so just asking. Um, yeah, again, it's it's a little tough to tell because there's not a, a ton of research done specifically on palytoxin in zoas. Most of the research that's that's being done on on um, zoas and pallies, it's more about like taxonomy and identification less so like something really specific like palytoxin um like you know how much there is if it's in there at all uh super chat yeah two please what's up dollar 99 thanks you bought me another drink so i appreciate it man you kind of look like a well-dressed plague doctor <laughs> Yeah, actually, the uh, the the other the other mask that's that's floating around, um, that's actually even more plague doctor esque. But yeah, I could I could kind of see it. I was actually going for like a plague doctor look, but then all of this like uh, like bird related stuff kind of like fell into my lap. So, like Suzanne's wearing the wings. Here's Lawson coming into frame. <laughs> because he's not creepy or anything. Nope, but. <laughs> It's time for the dragon's milk. So we will be going with this one right here from New Holland. <clears throat> Did I miss another super chat? Nope, I didn't. It was just too please. <laughs> Dan, who's the guest this week? So uh, the guests are, it's, it's a, one of my favorite couples, we vacation a lot together from this from my college days. So this is Lawson and his wife Suzanne is in and out. They um, 
They like to drink a lot. Yes. <laughs> we, so we usually we, when we get together, there's a lot of bottles being opened. Yeah. Pretty much that. So uh, they're they're one of the, the the couples that I'm going to be going to Vietnam with later on. But yeah, I mean we're like friends for now. Geez, I don't know, twenty something years. He and I were uh, freshman year roommates, and yeah, we still we still managed to a survive freshman year, not completely hate each other, and then That's true. it got better after that. Uh-huh. <laughs> Nightmare fuel. Yeah. My robot vacuum cleaner turned on, so it's like, yeah, somebody go turn off my robot, please. <laughs> hey, what's up, Reef dudes? Halloween flare, yeah. So this, so welcome to the creepy cocktail party, guys. Uh, Matthew, what's your thoughts on sexy shrimp? Uh, they're pretty cool. Um, we have a couple of them in with our mini maxis, and they actually like host on stuff, and they host in a whole bunch of things. They host in all kinds of different corals and stuff like that. So yeah, they're pretty cool. You just have to make sure that uh, some of your other fish don't just jack them. Because we like to keep a lot of wrasses and I'm always kind of worried, you know, if one of my wrasses just decides to just to knock one off. Any fish or inverts are just coral. It's just corals. That's really all we sell. Um, Definitely no fish ever. Uh, and sometimes we'll do something with inverts, but it'll be kind of seldom. It'll because it's it'll have to be something that grows commensally with corals. So uh, in in the past we've done stuff with like um, like those pagarita hermit crabs that live in Astriopora, things like that. But no, it, and we used to do a little bit of, with clams, but we've kind kind of gone away from clams. They're just not very good at keeping them, at least not at the greenhouse. I just asked my brother. The pirate stream was the first one we watched. Yeah, it's like, I can't believe it's been four years. You know what I, I really can't believe? It's that I haven't seen other um, other people adopt this format just yet for like, you know, live streaming of things. Cause it's been four years and I, I can only think of like a couple that are that have done a little bit with live shows and selling, but it's not a lot. So that's like my biggest surprise. Any tips on how to get rid of green turf algae? I do have some tips, but you're not going to like them. Really, when it comes to turf algae, you're talking about physical removal. Oftentimes, it's easier just to remove that rock entirely from the system and just let, let it cook in the sun outside, let all that algae die. It's going to kind of like brush it all off, and then reintroduce it. It's not, uh, it's not that fun. Hey mom. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. What'd you bring? I brought um, some katsu uh -huh. and then some sush sashimi and some what is it? I don't know. Different oh, kinds. Seafood. Oh, okay. Yeah. Suzanne's over there like nodding in in, in, in approval. And yeah. then there's uh, soup and salad. Nice. Appreciate it. So there was a frag swap earlier today that I did not go to, but my parents went to. So they were probably spending the month's profit on corals. Restocking. But they were unloading, so it's fine. Yeah, probably. <laughs> did you guys get a lot of good stuff at the frag swap? I guess, you know, some um, that I wanted to add new stuff. Yeah. Some that I had stuff, but they were just very few, so I wanted to boost up the inventory okay okay cool all right that works <clears throat> all right Fini finish that off uh that's a bad idea and we're gonna <laughs> top you off hurry up no that's a bad idea that, that's like this is strong like the, the the stuff i'm drinking right now it's um uh yeah it's uh 13.2 percent alcohol by volume so i don't need to be hurrying down that anytime soon would it is that even legal? 
I don't wouldn't know. It be illegal? What? Why wouldn't it be? There, there's certain like uh, percentages like that's that's not legal in Ohio. So for example, um, Dogfish Head 120 minute I IPA. <laughs> Actually, I think that was from the Democrats. But anyway, um, the uh, yeah the 120 minute Dogfish Head is yeah. not legal in in ohio isn't it like 19 percent or something like that though it could be like 19 something but 13.2 is really damn high that's less than wine though is it yeah so i think that it might be something if it's over that it has to be classified as like a hard liquor okay i gotcha which swap did your mom go to uh which swap uh they went to cc the Two cleveland yeah they went to the cleveland saltwater enthusiast association their swap. Hope you guys ate a big breakfast with those big ABV beers. Yeah, we did. Yeah. So there's this, there's, okay, it's, nobody cares, but there's this restaurant, which is about 25 minutes away, that serves the most bomb breakfasts ever. Like, they're so good. And I'm glad in one way that, that it is 25 minutes away. It's a little bit of a trek just to get out there because I would eat there twice a day if I could. It's so good. Muzzleloader was asking your... about uh, re-entering credit cards on your website. Is that something you guys have to do on the new site? Uh, to be perfectly honest, Muzzleloader, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I haven't placed a lot of orders in, in rapid succession. I think the new website... Um, well, well, we definitely don't store credit card information. But I'm wondering if your browser will autofill most of the credit card details except for the the C the CCV or CVV credit verification number, whatever. So there might be a way to expedite that, um, but I'm not really sure. I don't shop on my own site. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, fam. What's up? Kristen's on Facebook, and she wants to know if your mom is dressed up. Mom's not dressed up, Kristen. <laughs> So it's it's funny how like there's a completely different crowd on Facebook versus uh, on the YouTube side of things, but what's up, Kristen? I can't wait for you to come back and hang out. It's been a long time. So Kristen like is not in the reef aquarium hobby, but when when um, when she did used to live in town here, uh, she would actually come with me to shows way back when we actually sold at live frag swaps and stuff. So she got her her toes wet in, in the reef aquarium world on that scale. Preston had asked, uh, if you could only propagate one coral, what would it be? Mm. Um, that's an interesting question. I would probably have to go with something that's in high demand that's very fast growing. And I guess like somewhat challenging so that I wouldn't completely lose interest. So I hate to say the most predictable answer, but it's probably going to be SPS of some sort. Probably Acropora. Uh, Rashid Rai. Man, any scolies during the live sale? There is, and I, I, I'm sorry, but it's literally the last item on the live show. <laughs> so um, you might have to, uh, to wait a little while. Um, it'll be here in about two hours. <laughs> And so uh, you probably are noticing Lisa's Aquatics. She is like the goat moderator. There you go. Running the show. So she is like a moderator of not just this channel, but of like a whole bunch of other channels. And she just like just, again, constantly plugging like helpful links and everything like that. Got questions? Go here. You know, support Patreon? Go here. It's, she's fantastic. Everybody loves you, Lisa. And, and you already know this. Cindy on Facebook said Japan's on her bucket list. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Cindy. Seamus? Okay, different Cindy. Because uh, cause the. <laughs> this is so one percenter. Uh, my, my, my custom tailor is named also named Cindy. <laughs> and I was wondering if that was. Her. Finish that off so you can take some of this here. There we go. No, Japan is awesome. Uh, if you guys are into travel and want to experience Asia in like. <laughs> literally the safest way possible uh japan is your jam because like so here in um in the united states 
like we're just like you know we're used to we we've normalized everything that's around us so like uh when these two these guys two used to live in detroit and there's like something called like apple picking where like if you are walking around downtown with your phone out somebody might happen to snatch it right out of your hand while you're using it yeah. and that thing will be sold in the black market within 20 minutes okay and that's just the thing here in, in downtown cleveland eh, probably not not so much of a thing but it's generally a bad idea to do that in detroit downtown yeah. so compare that to like tokyo I lost my phone the very first day I set foot in that place. And there's no way to actually lose your phone because someone will find it, someone will turn it into the authorities, and it will be waiting for you either at the train station where you, where I lost it or at the police department. Like, it's impossible. Like, try it. The next time you're in Tokyo or any place in, in Japan, really, throw your phone somewhere in public, like in, in a train station or on a train, and just leave. And go get it the next day. It's amazing. Yeah. K Town Reefer, what's up? Thirteen ninety nine. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate the support. Um, like, I, I can't begin to explain how, um, you know, as a YouTube creator, it's it's such a challenge to constantly be producing content. I mean, it seems like oh, you, you know, you're just making videos. It should be it should be easy cakes, right? Um, when you've done it for about four years, it's a it is a tremendous chore to do, and it takes like a, like a big mental toll. And doing that and also trying to like run a business in the background, it's it gets tough. So like literally any amount of support, it's it's so welcome. You have no idea. I'm sure you, like if you if you guys are like fans of Rico and everything, he talks about it to a much greater degree. And you know, and as like a store that sells, you know, I get that. You know, we're not exactly the most sympathetic, uh, you know, creators to, to donate to. But, yeah, it's really nice to get. So I appreciate you guys. So thanks to everybody that's donated so far. By Super Chat, Lee Tate, Two Please, K-Town Reefer. You guys are awesome. I have a Facebook question. Okay, Facebook, what's up? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being most difficult, how difficult are non-photosynthetic Gorgonians? Non-photosynthetic Gorgonians on a scale of 1 to 10. To keep. Uh, 9.5. 9.5. from Brandon Ellis. So, so Brandon, um, non-photosynthetic is, is bad to begin with, right? But I think that people greatly underestimate how much they should be feeding their tank. A lot of these non-photosynthetic filter feeders like Gorgonians, they pretty much feed like 24-7. So you kind of have the, the choice between trying to placate them and constantly feeding versus polluting your tank, causing a new nutrient spike, and having the coral crash anyway. So it's really, really difficult. Um, the people that have the most success basically have put um, automatic feeders on timers for it to be fed roughly every hour on the hour. Um, public aquariums that, that even have like the water volume to sustain that sort of thing, they struggle with this stuff. Um, there's all kinds of like articles about flow rate and suspension rate of like all the like the of the particles of food. So not only do you have to like provide the food, but it has to stay in the water column for long enough for the corals itself to grab it all. It's it's an ordeal. Um, we've tried it. We've even tried like having different types of of like small foods like phytoplankton, rotifers, and whatnot that are like frozen, or not frozen, but refrigerated in a small freezer, um, like a dorm fridge type thing, and having like a dosing pump system in the refrigerator to to dump food periodically into the tank, and we still couldn't keep it alive. It's very challenging. Secret Jellyfish Keeper there had a question. Are you still doing bad with Yuma's? Um, I really like my... Uh, Recordia Yuma. A lot of like our challenge with um, with keeping Recordia Yuma specifically is the fact that a lot of the times ours are recently imported, and the and a lot of times they are much more sensitive. Once they get established in your tank, it's not nearly as big of an issue. Withdrawals in between shows. <laughs> you need to do more shows. Oh, withdrawals. I'm like, 
Am I, is my speech slurring? <laughs> That's what yeah. I literally thought that was. It's like... I don't know. I, might I'm, be. Not, I'm not the sharpest crayon in the yeah. box right We're now. We're about to open up another bottle, so... Mm. He's going to be slurring his speeches quite a bit. So, this is dragon's milk. It, this yeah. is way better than I remember. It tastes really smooth after that. Yeah, that, that other stuff was like kind of kind of rough. Did in you see the uh, bottling date of this one? It was only bottled a few days, or I think. Chimp a month the Reaper. Ago. What's up, oh, really? man? What's up, Chimp? As, as Welcome. As we get it? Yeah. <clears throat> How do I select live sale shipping? Um. So Lin Nguyen, uh, when you're checking out as the shipping method, you can select local pickup slash live sale slash adding to an existing order. So that should be a zero cost option once you get to the shipping stage, the, the, the selecting your shipping method. No, you do not sound Texan, Dan. No. After two more bottles, he will. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, they need their live stream fix. You know, I, I um, this particular live stream took a whole lot of pre-production. So I, um, I purchased an absolute monster of a computer in order to do for, like 4K editing and stuff like that. This is some behind the scenes type, type info for you. It's a, it's a monster computer, like absolutely ferocious. Before I get to that, happy Halloween. Thank you, Jeffrey CE, appreciate it. Appreciate the super chat. Um, and I loaded this thing onto my timeline. I did all my edits. The thing was crawling. Like all, all the things that you're seeing now, like the number of corals that I was editing, the number of shots, the, the transitions, the overlays, the timers, all that stuff was crushing my computer. So I went to compile, okay? It stayed on 0% for like an hour. And I'm thinking, boy, I really hope that this thing isn't just like broken because I can't like, if, if this doesn't at least show me 1% before I go to bed, like, I have no idea if I'm gonna even have a show tomorrow. So, but luckily, figured it out overnight. I can smell, two please, I can smell your breath from here. I've had like <laughs> one glass. You've had a little more than one. I've had one glass. Get working mm. on that, hurry up. Regards from Neverland. Yes, the alcohol does make my brain slow. It's like, is he is he making a joke or is that a typo that's supposed to be Netherlands? See, it might I, be. I don't know. It, could, it could be an autocorrect thing. <laughs> um, I want to make a tank full of Recordia and a few LPS, maybe some Zoanthids. You can definitely do that. That's uh, That should be a fairly smooth thing to try. Somebody had a question about coral for a low light tank. Okay. I think it was further up. So off the top of my head, uh, the corals that would do really well in a, in a very low light tank would be things like Cyphastria, Leptastria, and Blastomusa. So if you're familiar with those or not familiar with those, you can check those out on my website, do a little bit of, of reading and video watching around those. But basically, uh, those guys can survive in extremely dim lighting. One of the things I'm noticing is how coral names sound like Pokemon names. <laughs> like... All of these, if you could be talking about, talking about Pokemon, and nobody would know the difference. Yeah, I could see that. Um, Do you, uh, somebody here, Lou Ree, Ree had a question about uh, pre-built PC, or do you build it uh, yourself? You're not going to like me. <laughs> I got an iMac Pro. So, you know, so there's something called an Apple tax, where... Apple basically overcharges for underpowered gear. So like historically an Apple laptop for its performance is grossly overpriced, right? But one of the few things that does not have much of an Apple tax is an iMac Pro. The yeah. problem is it's still really expensive because it's just a monster computing thing. And the reason why I went with Apple, not that I'm necessarily married to Apple, I don't love them exactly, but um, the reason why I went with them is because I am kind of married to Final Cut, which is uh, for YouTube creators, 
it's really nice because of how fast it can process videos. And that is after I just told you the story about how it was struggling with this video that, um, that we had to process. But again, we, it was processing uh, 4K files, and I think this entire video is like over two and a half hours. So there's that. Thanks. I bought a Duncan with bad lighting and struggling to keep it alive. Uh, you, if you're if you're not able to um, provide it like proper lighting, you can you might be able to make up the difference with feeding. Give that a try. What are some uh, inexpensive lighting upgrades people can do for their tanks? Uh, inexpensive lighting. So T five is not a, a very popular technology, but as far as like value for dollars spent on fixtures anyway. It's very nice. So I would definitely go that route. I mean, you could argue that the T5 lighting is like the crown jewel as far as performance. But but LED is clearly like the most, you know, like the favorite technology for, for a number of reasons, the controllability, um, heat, ease of like custom customization, things like that. But uh, like T5 would be a very inexpensive thing to get into for, for high quality. Your iMac is not underpowered. Uh, Mac, uh, way underpowered. Uh, it's, it's pretty damn powerful. Like, so my, my thing currently is like a 10 core um, Intel Xeon, like 64 gigs of RAM. And I think like it's it's running some uh, some workstation class like GPU. All of its storage internally is like you know it's like M.2 RAID zeroed. So like my, so I'm I'm basically paying double for my storage because it's two things of M2 um, like uh, SSDs, but it's running RAID zero for like ultra performance. It's it's insane. Um, and like I said, it's it's one of the few things that doesn't have an Apple tax because it's so expensive to begin with that you couldn't you couldn't put an Apple tax on it because it's just too damn expensive. Nobody would buy it at that point. You just moved off of your iPhone to a Samsung Galaxy, though. So yeah, I did. I, I wanted to try uh, Android out. So I have both an iPhone and uh, a Samsung Galaxy right now, Android. Let's top that off. Get this show going. Okay, good. You're not mixing to two different random beers, are you? No. Nope. Still, still on Dragon's Milk. So usually I don't love the the bourbon barrel stuff. This isn't too bad though. No, Dragon's it's good. Is... Yeah, Dragon's Milk is like a nice combination of like smooth, like like a like like creamy vanilla stuff going on. So I don't know if if you guys are into like craft. Uh, brews and things like that. Michigan is really high on that list as far as like how many good breweries they have. We're talking about the Winter Beer Festival this year. You have the gear to go. Yeah, I do. I think that you guys are bailed out though. Not for winter. I think we're still we good. Didn't bail out. I think. I thought Lisa. Lisa. I, I, I thought Lisa. I thought you and Lisa bailed out. Or was it just Lisa? So Lisa is one of our other friends, uh, not, not, not chat Lisa. Uh, Lisa is another one of our friends from back in college. Um, she is the wife of my other best friend, Dr. Dave, who has not been on this, uh, this stream, um, but he's actually like a moderator on Reef Central, if you guys are familiar with that message board. Um, so they have, a, they're, they're, they have like a, how many beer fests per year? Four beer fests, yep. one for each season up in Michigan. And I've gone to like a few. Um, they're fun. They're fun. Uh, the Winter Beer Fest, though, is by my personal favorite. Uh, not because of beer, but because the conditions are so brutal that it like it wipes people out. You, like, you had battery powered gloves. I had heated gloves, like guys. Iron Man gloves with yes. these battery packs. Yes, and I had like like Ar like like full like Arcteryx gear. Yeah, they like head to toe, like insulated everything, battery operated heating, and I was loving it. I loved Winter Beer Fest, and everybody else was dying. Yeah, they were standing over by these fire pits. Yeah, just trying to just trying to survive, and like you know, it's like the snow is going like sideways. Then there's some dudes in kilts, 
they all died. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> so it was like a, we'll have to do a video a of Winter Beer check. Festival yeah. this year. Yeah, except that you know you can't even like touch your phone because like your gloves are too thick. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Is Lawson trying to get you drunk before five? I'm guessing you're drunk already. I'm drunk already. Oh yeah, we're we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get this this show going. Definitely like, before uh, five. Careful with the sweet alcohol. Uh, yeah. Have you added up? Oh, okay. So I'm like m missing context here. Mm -hmm. Apple pulled you into their ecosystem and then pulled the Apple tax on you. So it's funny about the Apple ecosystem. I've been very resistant to the Apple ecosystem to the point where like I insta close um, iTunes whenever it pops up. I want nothing to do with iTunes. Yeah, it is pretty bad. Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I want nothing to do with iCloud. Um, it was like, oh, we want to back up your computer. Let it burn. Like, I lost all my data. That's just fine. Like, I don't know. Gone. Drew over here from uh, northern Alberta, Canada, he was at least talking about that. That'd be the place <laughs> to do a true gear check. My, my gear check is for real, though. My only problem is I have, like, you know, um, equator DNA. So I'm not exactly, you know, like, well situated for that. But my gear is ready for Antarctica. Antarctica. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> guys in kilts and they all died yeah you know what beer does not save you from that like <laughs> yeah it cannot be february and a snowstorm yeah, i better not see your knees you just feel happier when you're dying yeah those guys are dumb but people were struggling like like um okay so my friend dave dr dave the guy that's not here with wife lisa um those two, like when we go on vacation, we like to go to tropical places. We like to go to Cancun, like you know, Okinawa is awesome. Places like that, Hawaii. We want to go places like that, right? We can never get Dave and Lisa to go. They want to go to Nepal and climb up a damn mountain. They want to go to Alaska. They want to like go to all these like winter wonderland places, Upper Peninsula, Michigan, and go camping. Um, they were struggling during Winter Beer Fest. I remember like both uh, both Dave and Lisa having to huddle around some campfire or something like that. How did you earn so many degrees? You're so talented. Oh, thanks, Eric. You know what? As far as like getting education and getting degrees, I like to call it time, not skill. We should talk about law school. Why did yeah. you go to law school, Dan? Why did, why did I go to law school? Because this one here um, put the put that little bead into my head that, oh, you know what, you should try to go to law school. And I'm like, well, why not? So I actually went to law school, graduated, and passed the bar. And you know what she did? She didn't go to law school in that entire time <laughs> for four years. And then after that, she, she did go. She's now a practicing attorney. Now she works at some big evil law firm, like some devil's Wolf, advocate Wolf level. Yeah, so that she's probably you know trying to protect some multinational corporation for their ability to pollute your water or something like that. I don't know what they do, but I'm guessing I'm not far off from that. Anyway, so she's part of some like you know she's she's helping the man out. I can't talk about it. All right, um, Brandon Ellis has a question. I'm curious if you she sold an, out to the man. I'm curious if you have an estimated final finish date on the new building. I live in North Central Indiana, and I'd love to make a trip over and spend some money. Also, I'd like, I would be willing to give you some drone footage of your property if you like. Mm. You can fly my drone, because <laughs> I haven't done very much of that yet. Um, the building is probably going to be getting done um, within about six months or so. We're looking at summertime, and we're actually doing a barbecue get-together. Now, it is... Um, I think it's gonna, it's on Eventbrite. It's uh, end of July. Titlegardens.eventbrite.com, I believe. Somebody can 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 fact check yeah. that for me. But yeah. the cost for it is twenty five dollars, and that's only for us to be able to buy footage by. I was about to say footage, by food, for you guys. Um, but what what I plan to do is to have like a gift bag for everybody. So included in the gift bag will be hopefully 10 times the value of of the cost to just to to show up and obviously food and drink is going to be provided 
So that might be if you're thinking about like sometime in summertime to come visit, that'll be the event. And we're gonna be live streaming the whole thing. It'll be fun. All right, it's can you post a link? It is the second annual Title Gardens Barbecue, Saturday, July twenty seventh. Yes, July twenty seventh. I should I probably should have mentioned the date. It's can you July twenty seventh. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna post a link here. It's it, I think it might be titlegardens. Dot. Well, Lawson has it pulled up. Eventbrite.com. So let me know if that works, you guys. Title. Wait, no, it's not titlegardens. Eventbrite.com. I think it's titlegardens. BBQ. Eventbrite.com. Lawson posted it. You did not. On, on Facebook, maybe. Can you post it also on? <laughs> here, I think I think it's. YouTube. You might the chat delayed, guys. Oh, title there, there it is. There it is. Okay, all right. So, so Lawson's got me covered. All right. <laughs> Stop typing. Don't drink and type. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should get you a little more drunk and then get on some Facebook, Reddit, and uh, moderator boards and just go crazy. <laughs> Let's see what you could do on Reef Central. Oh, that might be bad. Reef Central is like boring. What's going on with Reese? Are, are there any? What? Like, like I, I haven't, I haven't really been on there much. Like, I don't know. But then again, I haven't been on any message. But I shouldn't say it's been boring. But so I, I say that it's, that um, I say that because I used to be a moderator way back in the day, like about 10, 10 years ago or something like that. Before you started Title Gardens. No, no, it was, it was, it was when I still had Title Gardens, but. Like, I think that what 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 uh, ended up happening was I got into World of Warcraft and I started and I stopped doing the hobby for a little bit. That's what happened. I thought you weren't supposed. I thought that there was some prohibition on business owners being. No, no, no. It's not about uh, business owners so much as like business postings. I see. Are there any Reddit chats? Or coral related topics that are pretty hot not on reddit there's like our reef tank but it's not like it's no big deal like it, it's not it's not super super active or anything like that i'm called you snoopy i think they're taking your bird <laughs> Is Snoopy's not a bird? No. No. Who's the, who's the bird? Woodstock. Uh, Woodstock. Woodstock. That's like a weird name for a bird. Woodstock. Yeah, I don't know how they came up with that. Is Woodstock a woodpecker? But he's yellow. Or what she? is? I don't know what Woodstock is. It's a yellow bird. So you know, I, I wonder if like if people in chat even know what we're talking about, like peanuts. Yeah, like, like Charlie peanuts Brown. Peanuts is well known. Yeah, Charlie Brown peanuts. For people that are like our age, but why? How would some how would some eighteen year old know who Snoopy is? Well, Erica knows. She's younger. Guys in chat, if you're under the age of twenty and know who Snoopy or Charlie Brown is, why and how do you know who they are? Out of curiosity. Under the age of twenty, how many people in chat are under the age of twenty? Uh, it should be about thirty percent. So, guys. Canary. People are saying she. Uh, oh yeah, I believe that canary. That would be a yellow bird. But why Woodstock? Do we know why canary? Why Woodstock is named? No, is I, so I can't. Named. I cannot imagine that. Yeah, this is like canary. What's a Snoopy? <laughs> exactly. Snoopy is a beagle. Okay, I could see that. But kids know who Snoopy is. Okay. So K-Town Reefer hopefully has kids under 20, maybe? No? <laughs> yeah, it's I, I don't know where they would even know that. Please explain. <laughs> yeah. So, like, way back in the day, there used to be these things called newspapers that, that would, like, come to your house. Like, there, there's a, there would actually be a man that came to your house and brought you this, this like this printed publication, and on Saturday or Sunday, 
fun day? I don't know. One of the weekend days. I think it might be Sunday. It was like Sunday extra funnies, yes. thick. It was extra, extra thick. And in there would be like a section for the kids, for like comics. And in that comics would be a syndicated comic called Peanuts. And two of the characters are Charlie Brown and Snoopy. And Woodstock is and another. Woodstock. That's, so that's a third character. There was and just a Peanuts several, movie. There's, there's okay. Others. All right. So what's some, what are some of the Halloween shows you're looking forward to see? Any scary movies? Like new or classics? So there's like this thing on Netflix that's supposed to be good. Like the Haunting of Hill House or something. I've heard about that. I heard that's really good. I haven't watched any of it. Wait, can they hear Lawson's question? Do they know what Lawson asked you? What did you, what did you ask? He asked, are there any Halloween shows yeah. or scary movies? Yeah, we're not talking about a haunt, yeah, Haunting Yeah, but could, I just didn't know if they could hear you when he was oh. off camera. Yeah. How, how powerful it might be. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you, I, I don't know if you heard that. So it's like, am, am I missing yeah, out on something great? Um, not Lucy, really. Lucy is still a, she's a Peanuts character. Yeah. Pigpen. I think the, I think, I think the funniest thing about Peanuts is the fact that like all the kids can talk to one another, but when the teacher or any adult, adult. talks, it's mumble, 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 like that. I don't know why I think that's like so interesting. But like the adults, they they can't. You can't hear the adults, but well, you can a, only hear the kids. It's about how adults don't speak to children. Mm. All right, in, I'm watching House of the Hill Haunting. Can... What? Uh, that was House... dyslexic. <laughs> Whatever it is, I want to see it on Netflix probably this weekend. L- Lost and struck. Yeah. So, uh, Dia Cantus Reef Haunting of Hill House is great. Hill House is dope. There the you go. The Haunting of Hill House, I think, is the is the. <laughs> That's the appropriate. That's the words you were trying to get out. So actually, there, there's like this entire genre of like high horror that I've kind of missed out on. So um, yeah, so I, I guess like everything associated with like, I guess like the, the Conjuring is supposed to be very good. Okay. Um, maybe the spinoffs might not be as good, but like the Conjuring series is supposed to be very, very good. I haven't seen any of that. Um, I guess the closest thing to like highbrow horror that I've seen that I really liked was Get Out. Mm, yes. Like, yeah. Thank you, Lawson. Still in Dragon's Belt. Okay. It's good until the ending. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Get Out? Uh, no. It, no it spoilers. Might be, it might be no House. spoilers. Yeah. Oh, and the other thing is like Castlevania is coming up. I guess that doesn't exactly okay. count. Have but, you seen, did you watch Castlevania? I saw season one of Castlevania, and I guess season two is coming up this weekend, which I will probably binge Sunday night. Is it going to be short again? If it's short, it's easy to binge. That's true. That's true. So I could probably get done with all your shipping labels and then watch <laughs> Castlevania for the rest of the evening. We rewatched season one last week. Hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed Castlevania, and I, I'm surprised it took this long to get a season two. So there's also like a, a, a new witch series that's supposed to be pretty good called Cabin like... Fever. Have you seen Cabin Fever? I have not seen Cabin Fever. But you know what? Uh, speaking of like any kind of cabin related thing, I saw there was a... Um, so... I'm waiting, oh, for, I'm waiting for a Blair Witch Project reference. Oh, God. So you know, like half the half the people I know couldn't be bothered by Blair Witch Project. I was scared of any place that had leaves on the ground after seeing Blair Witch Project. You did react. So Lawson and I saw that at a at a theater in West Michigan mm-hmm. that is now closed, but it was very famous for a long time because it was at one time the largest theater in the world. I think definitely in the U.S. Really? Yeah, and it's now closed. It looks like a parking lot. Huh. Interesting. Cabin in the Woods is a great movie. I love Cabin in the Woods. Do you, have you seen that? Different from Cabin Fever? Yeah. Cabin in the Woods is like a very meta breakdown of like the horror genre. Oh. And it's, is it like, a, is it a spoof? It's It has spoofy elements to it. Okay. But um, it's done very well. Like, it's it's very clever on how they do it. I might like that. Like, I like 80s horror, 
So mm -hmm. things like Halloween and yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, those types of things I like. It's we a recently, Lawson scene cabin in the woods. We recently, oh, sometimes he watches things without me. Oh. We don't do everything together. We're married. I don't know. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I have no idea. So I don't like things that are gory or something. I don't know. Lawson had a term for it, but like the cell or anything that's like torture related. Uh, yeah, it has like, like torture porny. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm not here for that. Like no, uh, no saw. Mm -mm. Well, you know what saw is like really good like the first saw is like really good that's what people say i don't know so i'm very particular about and i also like things that are a little bit comical so we saw like little evil i thought that was kind of funny or like the tucker and dale movie which is kind uh, of a yeah spoof of that, those are that's are that's very spoofy yeah. yeah um shoot okay so there, th this isn't horror but it's like gore violence there's okay i shouldn't even say it because kids don't go pirate this movie there's this Japanese movie called Ichi the Killer, okay? And it was so messed up violent and so messed up adult themes, okay? That it was tough for me to watch. And I can stomach a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah, Sabrina. And it was, it was really tough for me to watch that whole movie. And at the very end, there's like a twist. And I'm like, oh, no, this movie was actually good. Oh, damn, because like, it now makes me, because it's, it's like watching like, Fight Club, where it's like you can like go back and watch the whole movie and it, and, it, and it completely changes the movie sort of thing. But this movie was so gross and so ultra violent that I'm like, I don't think I can go back and watch this thing. Um, Sabrina, we want to see that. We're always here for Salem. We're always here for the Black Cats. Sabrina is the Netflix one, right? Yes, the yeah. new Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. Mm. What about that South Korean movie that we watched? Where oh, that, that was ultra violent. Re revenge movie, mm. right? Revenge. It was called Old Boy. That was good. Kind of rough, but good. How about Cannibal Holocaust? No thanks. No, see, I don't want to watch Cannibal Holocaust because they're like, you know what? There's like this animal cruelty element in there. I don't got it. I don't have any patience for oh, that. Human centipede. Yep, that. I think that's the that's the movie where we were talking about where Lawson and I were talking about, and I, he told me about it, and I said, nah. no, that's like too. You know, there's this scene in the cell. Did you see the cell? I think I saw the cell. So there's this scene where is that there's the like the Jennifer? Yeah, yeah, Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. Lopez. Yeah, mm -hmm. and there's like this bisection of a horse or something, and yeah. it's like haunts me to this day. And it was like she's years a ago. horse person. She was like in the equestrian team at Michigan State and stuff like that. So like, you know, like you don't want to see like animal violence. At least I don't. It wasn't even like it wasn't like bloody. It was kind of clinical, but it was just the whole thing. Just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not no. Like people violence is much more acceptable than animal violence. Yes, Salem, yes. We have other black cat fans. Mm. Too bad Penny won't make an appearance. My parents today. would make me and my brother turn around for the makeout scenes so we could watch all the murder scenes. Oh, I did <laughs> that, that to sounds, my... That sounds pretty familiar, actually. I did that to my nephews. We were watching 500 because they were learning about... They were learning about that... The Spartans, and they were learning about that in school, and I was like, oh, they should see 500. And then watching it with, you know, What's my nephews who are, the movie 500. I don't know that movie. I feel like you've seen it. It's 500? What's it about? The Battle of Thermopylae. 300. 300. 300. It's like 500. 300, yes, 300. Okay. Some, several hundred. No Drew Janes, not two girls, one cup. That is the wrong answer. <laughs> it's a conversation stopper. Yeah, for reals. I did like the recent Hannibal series. It's okay. Oh yeah, Lawson it's okay. loves that. It's all right. I think it's very it's visually right. it's very visually stunning. So Thanks again too, please. I see you. One ninety nine. I appreciate it, man. Three everybody's like three hundred. <laughs> yes, everybody's like, what are you talking about? Like three hundred? <laughs> Salem doesn't speak now and he's basically a demon in the new one. Oh. Hmm. Uh, Bates Motel. I heard Bates Motel was good, but then again, I heard it from somebody who I don't. Sorry, Ben. I don't trust your taste. Wait, is this is this your Ben? Yeah, my Ben. Like like uh the like the uh, the full time employee here at Title Gardens, Ben. 
It's like he likes some dumb stuff. So <laughs> calling him out. Yeah, sorry, Ben. <laughs> some trash to your taste. I don't know though. I think the psycho storyline is really good. Yeah, it's just hard. I think that that's so hard to do to take an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Yeah, because you're not Alfred Ch- uh, Alfred Hitchcock. That's yeah. the problem. And even though they're old, so when I was in high school, I watched Dial M for Murder with a friend of mine. We had this big like epic marathon movie night, mm-hmm. and we watched Dial M for Mur- Murder. And it's just he Alfred Hitchcock really did a great job with that whole mystery genre mm-hmm. and just the things that he did in. What, like the 1930s, 1950s? I, don't know. I think it's like 50s, 50s. and 60s. Yeah, so yeah. without the technology that exists today, I think it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, he's he's like, he's like he's a fantastic director, and that's really hard to top. Tattoo Dancer, my sophistry is looking good, but not opening fully. Any tips other than low light, low flow? Um, so my worry there, if it's not opening well. So the, the low key worry is it's a chemistry issue so make sure that you're up on your water chemistry the other much more likely issue is that there's something directly bothering it whether it be a fish or whether it be like crabs like a hermit crab or something like that so also look out for that type of aggression issue i just noticed she has wings on <laughs> yeah it, it's, it's kind of hard to see the yeah, the, the, the wings with the, with the black background Uh, Bates Motel was was good, very well done with good actors. So the thing about Bates Motel, which I think is like flip flopped, is I think in that it's like, um, it's like a gender bent thing. Oh, so the the woman is the killer. Something oh, like that's that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I, see, I haven't watched a second I, of that show, so I'm not sure. I don't know, Ben. You need to educate Fan on Bates Motel and see if you can get him to watch it. Yeah. Play it in the greenhouse or something. I'm trying to think of like another uh, another like series that, that that that's like really good. Watch uh, Dead Alive by Peter Jack Peter Jackson. So uh, I, so thank well, you course, again. Yes, Ka- thank you, Casper, for the two dollars super chat. Greatly appreciated, of course. Um, I have this love hate relationship with Peter Jackson. He is either like, oh my god, that is the best director alive, or what the hell was that, Peter Jackson? Like it's so. Um, I- I'm assuming that Dead Alive is closer to Lord of the Rings than it is to The Hobbit. Like <laughs> you have that type of spread with Peter Jackson. So yeah, he at least there's there's a glimmer of hope that he did fa- a fantastic job with that. Guided by echoes. That's not how it goes. I missed the context. Sometimes I just miss the context. Oh, by the way, anytime, uh, like, Casper, that Rainbow Monty is amazing. That coral sells itself. Like, that that sells within seconds of it even showing up, I bet. Which one? Uh, like, the, the, the Rainbow Montipora. It's, it's, that was, like, the previous oh, the one. one. Yeah. Uh, tips for Montipora, uh, Stellata, and Digitata placement. There's not a lot to it. It's really about, like, higher flow, higher light. Make sure that it doesn't get stung by anything nearby. Hey, someone else booed Cabin Fever. Cabin Fever. Fever. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> so Cabin Fever. I haven't seen it. I haven't, I haven't seen it. Apparently we just need to ask Lawson. Yeah. No, no, no. There's um, Cabin in the Woods. Oh. And then there's and Cabin, Cabin Fever. Fever. And Lawson likes Cabin in the Woods. Yes. Cabin in the Woods is hilarious. See, I, I just can't keep them straight. I'm, not very, I'm so, not very good with horror. So or 300, obviously. Or numbers. <laughs> so that's why I went to law school. You know, that's what they say, right? Like you go to law school if you're bad at math. Yeah, I went to law school. Except for there's a lot of math and I'm involved Asian. in the practice of law. Like you know, I, I think, damages. I think, you know, I think like law school may be bad at math. I'm like the only Asian that can't do math anymore. Could you do math before? Mm-hmm. What is up, Brandon Ellis? Oh my gosh! Wow. What? What? He was over on Facebook too. Thank you, Brandon. Questions on Facebook. By the way, where is our Facebook moderator? Where'd he go? Did he fall? 
asleep. I don't, I don't know, but Facebook was kind of quiet. So Facebook was a great way if you wanted to get your question. Or yeah, your if you wanted comment, to get attention, yeah, Facebook was was the place. But YouTube is clearly like the crowd because there's like 155 ish watching. If you want to chat with others, YouTube is the place to be. But if you want better odds of getting your question right on screen. Yeah. Except for then Lawson left. Lawson was reading the. The scary spoopy looks swollen. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm so Somebody confused. Else Snoopy. Snoopy. <laughs> it's very, very confused. Very uh, confused with Snoopy. Could recording Florida be kept in low light or does it have, you know what? Okay, so secret jellyfish keeper. I think Recordia Florida are one of those mushrooms that really likes high light. Um, from where they're collected, they're pretty shallow in Florida. Um, so they're getting a ton of light. Have we talked about jellyfish? I'm sure you've talked about jellyfish, but. I've never kept them though. No, but you know how we went to the show in New Orleans? Mm -hmm. Was that Macna? No, it was Macna in New Orleans. And they had the specialized jellyfish tanks. Mm -hmm. They look like good things for people like me who are you know, like it is, less than coral novices. Now, now, guys, especially in chat, like the idea of jellyfish is super cool, right? But I think in practice, that is like really boring. Like I wonder if it's one of those things that you should have just bought yourself a lava lamp. It would have <laughs> been like one-tenth the price it won't die on you. Do you feel any ethical concerns about that? Like keeping basically a jellyfish no, level lamp? You, you, no, you can keep jellyfish. My problem with jellyfish is you're going to get bored of it like you would a lava lamp. And like just over time, it's like that is not going to hold your attention at all. It's, like, it's, a, it's a novelty for about five minutes. So in chat, do, do you agree with me or not? Because I think that is like it's noob bait. It's like if somebody doesn't know anything about salt water, it's like, oh my god, it's a jellyfish tank. And once like, you know, you actually get into this. Oh, by the way, yes. super chat, Ernie Wallace, two dollars. Thank you, man. Um yeah. Jellyfish are so boring. Yeah, jellyfish exactly, guys. Um Yeah, I I, I don't get the jelly well, I I get the jellyfish thing. But you would be better off with recordings of jellyfish as a screensaver than you would an actual jellyfish tank. It's the same thing. It's the same thing, guys. <clears throat> but some jellyfish, are all jellyfish bioluminescent? No, not all of them. Some of them are. I know you're. that's a thing that you're into. Yeah, biolumin bioluminescence is cool and all. But jellyfish, by their very nature, are just... Yeah, everybody's like, not for me, lava lamp. See? <laughs> see? <laughs> Uh, any idea how possible it is to buy coral in the States and cross the border to Canada? That is not something I will advise. Just going to throw that out there. Um, if uh, if somebody's got the inside intel on how to, like, you know, basically smuggle corals into Canada, well, that's all you, y'all. So theoretically. This is, and I don't, my name's Paul. This is between y'all. Theoretically? The, theoretically. If you buy them just some random place, uh -huh. like let's say you live in Windsor and you buy them in Metro Detroit. Detroit. Okay. And you have them in your car. That's not a question that you usually get asked. In my experience crossing the border, you don't get asked, do you have any coral or do you have any livestock or anything like that? True. But from what I understand, those customs agents do know what they're looking for. So if you're trying to if you're trying to cross the border with something that you should not be crossing the border with, don't do that. But if there I don't know what the I don't know what the rules are with There are literally international treaties that govern this stuff. Okay. It's like it's a not to mess with this stuff. And there's I think there's like five figure fines involved. So think real hard how much you want that A can. It it could be your car. I don't know. I tend to think that people are pretty reasonable if you declare them and you have a receipt and it's not something that is illegal to bring across. But there's a lot of concerns with invasive species. I think it's literally like illegal to bring across if you do not have an import-export license oh, to really? do so. Yeah. 
It's the, it, is, it is the province of interna international treaty, especially with regard to stony corals, like the acans that you're seeing on screen, or uh, e with, with like uh, stuff that's not scleractinia, which is the stony corals. Um, I think you still need to, to have it go through fish and wildlife on the U.S. end and then into the, uh, the, the similar process on the Canada end. I was talking to somebody that does do shipping and receiving of CITES-protected um, animals, and it, it absolutely is a process. Um, but if you're like looking to do it yourself, I I have no commentary for that. Like, do you ship to Canada? I do not. But we're we're looking into it. But it's purely preliminary. Purely. Tiago Hibiero, hello from Brazil. What is up, Brazil? Basically, I wouldn't do it to due to the possible fines. Yeah, the, the, the fines are going to be crushing. You can drive up with non cites coral, so many soft corals. So that might be true, but from, um, I, I was actually having this conversation with one of my import um, friends, and it's he said that you still have to do like um, some, some stuff with uh, fish and wildlife, things like that. So he, moves a ton of corals and he does not mess with uh with is, canada but is there a volume requirement i know some things like let's say let's say alcohol for example is mm -hmm. something that if you wanted to bring 10 cases of bourbon across the border you mm -hmm. can't do that but if you just want to bring a bottle like one thing so i i would normally say it's not an issue except for that this is like, yeah, if it's like protected or there's some sort of legislation, and I think like live international things, treaty. Well, That's and like problem. live things, you know, like if you're bringing fruits and vegetables, for example, or yeah. something like that. Like sometimes those things. You know, everyone that's been right. on a plane on an international flight didn't that happen. Yeah, you have, you have to declare like fruits and vegetables on an international flight. But th this is different in the sense that there's also so there's this thing called CITES, mm -hmm. which is like this international treaty for like the trade of these animals. Right. It's basically you are. Um, attempting to move across borders with an endangered species. Right. That's, so, but presumably that doesn't cover. Does that cover all coral? It covers all stony corals. Okay. So that's kind of where the, the rub is, so to speak. Oh, so guys, you probably are just now seeing it, but uh, number ninety-one totally just got jacked by my fish. <laughs> thanks, 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 buddy. So you so typically um like a, a copper band wouldn't just like smash a coral like that, but it's like it probably sees like something like just like just living in that little bit of detritus and went after it. Yep, and Casper's like not not only did it photo bomb, but it basically probably cost me a sale. But I kept the footage. It's fine now, trust me. But thanks, buddy. It's a resilient, <laughs> resilient coral. Survived a munch. That's why I don't have a copper band. <laughs> they liked your response to the to the treaty and driving across the border with coral. Did a what? So did I, did you ever hear about when Lawson and I got a uh, pepperoni pizza from Giordano's confiscated in Mexico? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I missed that story. So we went to... So, so Giordano, Giordano's? Giordano's. I'm is, Team Giordano's. Chicago-style pizza. You can be Team Gino's or Giordano's or maybe Lou Malnati's. Okay. It's a, it's a deep dish Chicago pizza. Yes. So you went to Mexico. So we went to Mexico and we had an early morning flight. So we spent the night in Chicago the night before and went out to Giordano's had maybe a couple pieces of pizza left and we were flying spirit so of course we had the to worst, fend... like one, one of the worst three airlines on, on the planet we had to fend for ourselves as far as food and we brought our pizza leftovers with us and then in mexico when we like we had cleared all the customs and cleared everything and then there was a guy standing like at the last door and he saw our pizza box and he's like what is this and apparently Mexico does not allow you to bring in cheese or any kind of meat products, including pepperoni, even though it's a cured meat. It's not allowed in. So he mm. took our pizza and threw it away. Interesting. 
theoretically threw it away. I don't know if I actually saw him like throw it away. <laughs> they incinerated it. Yeah. So somebody was saying that like if you're shipping uh, non cites coral, you have to go through Fish and Wildlife. But if you're not shipping, if you're just taking it across the border, it's okay. That might be too, please. Like, spirit sucks. True. You know who also sucks? Frontier. Frontier also sucks. I'm sure, like, like I'm offending I think that there's a, there's a there's, there, is, there, is, there is a time and a place. There's, there's not a time, a time and... or a place for Frontier <laughs> or Spirit. So, guys, you're not saving money. They charge you for carry on. Yeah, but. They feed you nothing. Okay, they give you no drinks. Not alcoholic drinks. They give you. No drinks. That's why you carry a water bottle. You fill it up at the airport. It's better for the environment. It's better for you. Better so, for needless to say, when we go to uh, to Asia, we will not be flying trash tier airlines. But we're flying a Dreamliner. We're, we're, yeah, we're going on a 787. That's right. Well, we like to do that. For Do you remember when you and I got stuck on United on the way home from Japan when we went to Okinawa? We got stuck? Yeah, so on the way there, we were on a uh, a United flight that was operated by ANA. This is the holy grail, by the way. Book a domestic airline, but it's operated by mm -hmm. an Asian car carrier. Okay, so hold, hold on. B but before we get like blasted for being un-American, okay? Stop. There's no similarity between an American airline and, and like a, an upper-tier Asian airline. Hey, you're, you're comparing like McDonald's to a filet mignon at your favorite steakhouse. That is how different those oh, two I carriers are. Oh, quite that significant. But yes, Asian airlines are better. And then European airlines are, in the, I would say, generally in the middle. Lufthansa. Lufthansa is pretty good. Yeah. pretty good. Stuff like that, okay. I drink a lot of whiskey and Cokes on Austrian. If you fly Singapore Air, within five minutes of you sitting down, you will have a glass of wine and a cup holder. Really? In economy? It, and, and they'll give you a menu in economy for your We got a menu in AA. Time. And remember when we were taking it, we were taking a selfie when we first sat down and the flight attendant came by and she said, do you want me to take that photo for you? And the uh, the stewardesses on Singapore Airlines are like runway models. Not that, not that people should necessarily have to be runway models to work an airline. I'm just saying they are. So in any case... Uh, but like the, the the main story is, if you're gonna fly internationally, fly with uh, a crew that's that's done by the foreign airline. But so I like think, but ANA, I think, JAL. But the story was we were all three just booking this <clears throat> this flight and trying to coordinate and get on the same flight, and you and I successfully got on the same flight, but somehow we managed to get on a United flight going home, operated by United. <sighs> And you were really unhappy about it. Casper is like Myers is I think menu in economy. Not only do you have a menu in economy, you have free drinks like alcoholic beverages. We got free drinks. We got we got Asahi beer from United. That's true. Okay, it's 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 not the same. Um, it's not the same. We had little footrests in on A and A. The seats were much more comfortable. There's a lot. Let me lighter. tell you about the video selection. Okay, um, when I was on Singapore Airlines, we had. 500 movies to choose from it's like having the entire netflix catalog available at your seat Let me throw that not 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 transformers revenge of the fallen or what of last night four times during the flight I we watched the or teenage mutant ninja turtles i didn't I, I missed teenage mutant ninja turtles oh that's a good airplane flight all right I, it is time for our next bottle this is the this is the we're moving bottle. to the big one Christmas Hop. sale. And so, by the way, Hop and Frog, local Akron Brewery, they're no joke awesome. Um, but they make floats. strong beers, though. Beer floats? What are, Have, what are beer floats? That? With ice cream? Oh, they, they do that, right? Yeah, that's yeah, what I... Yeah. They, they do that at their tasting room. Oh, this is... <clears throat> it appears later. What salt do you use? Just curious. So Bryce, Madison, Matson. Oh, um, you have to give a major shout out to your salt folks. Didn't they hook I you up in would. Macna? Yeah. Lisa? Okay. They they hooked us up with my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, okay, so here we go. Okay. I is use it, is Omega. Lisa your sales 
Yes. Still? Okay. So, so we use Omega Salt. Um, we've done like a sponsored video with them. So when we were at Magna, like the the Omega Salt folks like took us all out, and it took us meaning like not just like me, Lawson, and Suzanne. But we had like other friends too, so they took out like a party two, of two, like two. Fr we had two friends. So it was like a party of seven that um, that so o Omega took us out, and and at the end of dinner, everybody's like, "Thank you so much, Lisa, for taking us out." And blah blah. I'm like, all of this was paid for by me. Like, where did all this money come from? I'm the client here. <laughs> well, I'm the one buying skids well, of we salt. Well, we hooked you up with your lodging in New Orleans. Oh, true, true, true. True, and I and I thanked you for that. Yes. Okay, but everybody thanked Omega for dinner. But that was very that was very nice of them. Lisa was an amazing yeah. hostess, so we're huge fans. Of I, I put Omega. Lisa's on Facebook. So so Lisa, if you're we we love you, Lisa. We, Lisa from Omega, and we love Lisa Aquatics on chat as well. But Lisa from Omega hooked us up with dinner with my money. This, I'm, I'm suddenly realizing we know a lot of Lisas. Yes, we know there, a lot there, of Lisas. It's a, it's a very common name. It must be biblical in some way. I don't know. I think <laughs> Two please like, Than, don't stand up real quick. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> you know what? This smells amazing. It's uh, very, are, are it is Christmas? very festive. Yeah, so so Christmas ale, just, just on scent. There's like some cinnamon and... Lots of cinnamon. Than's skeptical face. <laughs> I'm using table salt. My cold. man, Eric, come on now. You need, so okay. You need, to so, you need to call Lisa and Omega. So Eric, okay. So the, 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 so this is funny, okay? He's joking that he's using table salt and his corals are. How good. many people have called you with that or emailed you? No. One of the guys that works here is my personal trainer, Sean. Is Lisa okay. On Facebook, or he talking? had the brilliant idea of Facebook. doing exactly that because he's trying to look for a deal. Needless to say, it did not work out that well for him. So Eric, I'm sure, is joking. Sean was not joking. He did it. And it didn't go well. Uh, Monye McNamee, finally, I'm able to log in and catch Than's Drunken Halloween. By the way, I'm sure you're covered this, but Than, WTF are you dressed as? Put the, put the so we are at a creepy Upper Crest 1% or cocktail Would you party. And I, I'm not. Maybe Lawson I'm not, will come on screen for us. Yeah. So 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 Lawson. So uh, imagine kind of like uh, a PG rated eyes wide shut with alcohol. And the reason why I don't have my mask on all the time is this. Maybe not even PG. Maybe G rated. Is this G rated? Well, there's no. I think there's an undertone of like salacious activity. Oh, there's Lawson. <laughs> I want a Rainbow Monty so bad. Yeah, the Rainbow Monty's go quick on this show. The Christmas ale is good. It's spicy. Tastes like Christmas. There's a lot going on in this beer. You know, how do you feel about like Christmas beers, all. pumpkin beers, like the whole category of seasonal beers? with spices I think there's like a time and place for them obviously and it's usually like a very very short period um, they're kind of gimmicky mm -hmm. this beer is like uh, there's a lot going on <laughs> yeah so guys like so so we're, we're drinking that this this, this uh, frosted frog by the way hop and frog should totally sponsor you you Hop and you frog. Give props. Anytime you're drinking on screen, you're probably drinking a hop and frog. They're really good. They're really good. Are they actually Akron? Are they? Yeah, say our Akron. We've been there. Well, I know it's, we've been there. It's but... like twenty minutes from here. Yeah, but we've also been to places in Cleveland. Like we love Michael Simon. We're big fans of. He's all right. His places. We go... <laughs> He's all right. He's all right. Lola roast. Yeah. He should sponsor you too. There's a lot of there's a lot of brands that should sponsor me, so I don't I don't want to get on that rant too much. But let's just say that the uh, that has what is this guided? It's like guided by echoes. I like guided pumpkin spice. Echoes. I like beers. I don't like has, them together. Has guided by echoes ever had Ichabod from New Holland? I'm gonna pro I'm like totally repping New Holland today. But I think Ichabod is one of my favorite pumpkin beers, and 
they only do it seasonally, of course. But it's not too much, and it's one of the original pumpkin beers. And then the other thing that I've had that I like is coffee flavored. I love coffee beers. flavored. So like coffee, it's, so they're almost like a pumpkin spice latte. Why are you drinking beer out of whiskey glasses? These are like water glasses. <laughs> well, they're rocks glasses. Are they? Yeah, All you right. could have an old fashioned in a glass like this. Yeah, I guess. Why are you drinking beer out of whiskey? Because they're smaller. <laughs> and and this beer, it's bourbon. Barrel yeah, these are all. Uh, this is barrel, bourbon barrel. Not age? this one, but the one we were drinking before. When it's thirteen percent. No, you th can this drink is just this, this is just like eight percent. No jack o' lantern left on Halloween. How dare you? I think Who's that? there is some. Where's that? So uh, so no. Oh, th th a, there's a coral is, called oh. the jack o' lantern leptoceros. <laughs> um. So I like pumpkin spice and I like beers and I like them together. I I get that. Um. So on Facebook, if Kristen, if you're still watching, I know you pop in and out, but Kristen loves her some pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin. Yeah, I Have think you I've had, had that? that. It basically tastes like pumpkin pie. Then we, so th this is back when she was in town. We had like a, a pumpkin beer battle. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So we, 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 there was like a hop and frog one. And 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 one of the other ones is Pumpkin, and she's like all about what the Southern Tier. I think that's the name of that company. Okay. It's a New York uh, beer company, but yeah. she loves Pumpkin. I think Pum I had King. that last weekend. It's pretty good. Uh, I think that is that a coffee Eve one. No, Pumpkin is basically like it is straight up a pumpkin pie. Okay. It's like it takes tastes almost like a cheesecake. Uh, guided by by guided by Echoes has not had Ichabod. Huh. Uh, Casper Mars 24K Lepto, never seen that before. It's pretty special in that it is highlighter yellow. Well, we're actually talking about coral? Amazing. Well, probably part of the problem is me. Subtle cat references and lots of stories. Uh, I intentionally overfed my cat because prior to this live show, she was parked right on my keyboard and wouldn't go away. So I had to like, I had to bribe her with food oh people probably want to see piper cameos piper's really cute but it's not like no, i can today, pick her up this show is penny's show though yeah i, I mean we do need the, the black cat but so my, my I, i've hates, got this she hates me she hates a lot of people so it's weird like how like some people my black cat will totally be like chummy around and then when lost and suzanne are here she she typically hides the whole weekend but she's, cat people like we're big time cat people she hides mostly from cat people it's Kristen? weird she hides she hides from Kristen. she hides from lost and suzanne and when like dog people show up she's fine with totally weird she came from a hoarding situation didn't she yeah she was she was a hoarding cat and she's only like a year old and she's already had kittens before weird wait till christmas live stream they're just as fun do we do that Yes. <laughs> Lawson's like, yes. I'm like, we do? Wait, 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 you know what I did? I do remember wearing like, like, uh, like. Santa beard. Yes, you've done that before. Well, I don't think you? it was a beard. I think it was like, I was oh, wearing no, like holiday your, lights your and like antlers. Drogo. I mean, your Aquaman. Yeah, the Aquaman was. Uh, the I one we're going to bring back is St. Patrick's Day. Okay, so St. Patty's Day will, will be really hard to top because we had Matt from Jayo Nation for the St. Patrick's Day show. And that was like insane. And, and I, I remember like when we were doing that show, I was like looking at chat and thinking it was broken because nobody was writing anything. Wait, did you get a super chat? I did Wait, not. Oh. I did not, did I? Root beer flavored beer. Oh, have you had that? Like not your dad's, not your father's? Yeah. Have you had that? Do you like root beer? It's all right, but I, is it a particular brewery? Well, there's one called like, I think it's called like not not your father's or not your dad's. Hmm, I don't remember that. Yeah. Nothing will beat this year's St. Patrick's. Sorry, not sorry. Bring I, it back. Dude's in China. So Lawson, okay. So so Lawson's texting me before he arrived. He's just like, invite all your friends. I'm like, I don't have friends. And he's like, invite your boy from Michigan. I'm like, I thought you were the boy from Michigan. Like, Is, that, is this him? The guy who's in China now? Yeah, and so he's like, he's like, you know, your your friend Matt, 
I'm like, dude's in China already. <laughs> I can't bring that. So, yeah, uh, he's tough to beat. You know, like being a mostly introverted guy, being around like a super extroverted guy like Matt is an experience on its own. And on top of that, like I am a more produced YouTuber, whereas he is a more live, uh, or not live, I'm sorry, more of like a vlogger YouTuber. We are very different people because like the entire time that he was over here that weekend, I mean, he was like recording everything. And it, was, it just it just hit me how like, I'm like a YouTube tourist compared to like how much that guy is always shooting. Like he's like, he's like always constantly telling me there's a story. There's always a story to be told daily with every little interaction you have with like people. He's, he's chatting up the waitresses, like the waitresses, like that, you know, I'm like a regular at certain restaurants. They don't know my name, but Matt is like best friends with them in the first 30 minutes, you know, that, that sort of thing. It's a pretty interesting guy. So I'm going to just do a hard subject change. Aquariums. Aquariums that you've visited. Okay. Aquariums. If you could only go back to one of them, which one would it be and why? Oh, there's no question. I would go back to Singapore because the Singapore SEA Aquarium is on a resort island called Sentosa Island. And there's like three or four different stops, I believe, on this on this uh, island. One of which is like a Universal Studios theme park. Another one, I believe, might be like the entire the, the zoo. Um, and one of the other ones was this um, was this aquarium. Singapore is amazing. I I talk up Singapore like it's like the best damn thing ever. It probably is. It's also a totally functioning dictatorship. So if you're all about, you know, like, you know, your rights and stuff, you kind of don't have a lot of those there. But it's it's where it, I think Singapore is an example of like everything that goes right in a dictatorship. Whereas like I'm trying to think of like a bad dictatorship. North Korea might be the exact opposite in, in, with results oriented. So you should give props to that YouTuber that you like. Didn't he do a. Isn't there a YouTube video about dictatorships that are good? Oh, so if you're if you're curious about that sort of thing, there's this thing, there's this video called Rules for Rulers. So if you just type that in, I think it was from um, CBG Gray. And it's basically a, a breakdown of why certain like governments work in certain geographies based on like the, like the the resources that are available. Long story short, you know, banana republic dictatorships happen because that's the only thing that could really spring up from places like that. If you're interested in sociopolitics yeah, or it, it, why why certain certain regions of the world experience certain types of governments, mm -hmm. I think that it's an interesting take. Yeah, it's it's like why aren't there just like people that are just cool that can just like rule? Yeah. Like, why, why can't we all be cool? Well, it's, you know, the whole, is it, is it, what comic book is it from? The whole absolute power corrupts absolutely. Or is that biblical? I don't know. I can never Absolute keep power corrupts absolutely. I've, I've heard it like a million times. Is it a biblical thing or is it a comic book thing? I don't not know. Not sure. But I do know that in Dune, they talk about that. But it's not, it's not in this, the, talked about the same way. Like Frank Herbert wrote it as power attracts the corruptible. Yes. So I, it's, it's, it's a little I, bit I of both. So that. like like absolute power corrupts absolutely, but at the same time, that same power attracts those that can be corrupted. Okay, so I want to get you back to aquariums because I've been to a few. CGP with you. Gray, there you go, Mark Andrews. Yes, okay. learn something, guys. Yeah, you've got to give props to the to the folks who are producing good content. Mm -hmm. So back to aquariums. What's what's your runner up? Runner up public aquariums. So th th this is like, so so my choices aren't necessarily based on the merits of the aquarium. Although I would have to say that Singapore is probably the best one I've been to. I would say this, the the one that I want to go to the most that I haven't been to is Georgia, Georgia Aquarium. Um, but I would say that the second best aquarium I've been to um, was the one in Okinawa. It was Why? fantastic. Yeah, what did you like about that? I have thoughts about what I liked about that because I have I happened to visit that with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so she and her law school friend 
who also works for a big evil law firm, although less big and evil than the one I work for now. So both of them sold out in, in different ways. So uh, so soulless Erica uh, <laughs> and so, soulless Suzanne, <laughs> we all went to, uh, to Okinawa, saw the aquarium there. What I liked about it was how it was just this gigantic complex. I mean, it's in the middle of nowhere, you guys. Like well, there's... Okinawa, other than Naha, which by the way, Naha totally blew us away because we were how, how big it was. We thought that Naha would be some podunk, nowhere little ville. Hamlet. And it it's was like, like Chicago. Hon or to me, I thought about Honolulu because yeah, it's sort it's of similar in terms of like this island city. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. It's really big and it goes on forever. Um, but when we went to the aquarium, it's like we're just driving like through the mountains. It was like in Nowheresville. And all of a sudden there's this mega complex and it's this aquarium. It's fantastic. Um, and it has like this huge whale shark tank and everything like that associated. So I would say that... Kurushio Sea. Yeah, Kurushio Sea, which, which is like the name of their big aquarium. It's like 2 million gallons or something like that. It's very cool. Um, but I, I'm so into the idea of like Okinawa because of like how exotic it is and how safe it is. But yet like it's a diving destination, but the diving itself is like hyper dangerous. And I kind of like that. And I'm weird. Yeah, so and there's... you also dived, you dived in a sort of controlled yeah, environment. Because it, the weather. I, I dove in a straight up monsoon. Dove, I dived. I dived. <laughs> uh, what kind of acro is going to go on my sleeve oh, tattoo? Oh, Waikiki, you've been there. You've I've been, been to, to the Waikiki Aquarium. Yeah, I've been to, I've been to Waikiki. It's tiny. It's very cool, but it's very tiny. Um, Karate sleeve Kid, tattoo. Get, um... You know what? Try to find a good picture of like a, a like a, a millipora. I think milliporas are pretty slick. Karate Kid in Okinawa. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> All right, bathroom break for me. I'll be right back. Handle it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Don't ask me any coral questions. Oh, good, Lawson. Lawson can handle coral questions, maybe. Well, I don't know. You can talk about aquariums. Why don't you talk about the Shed Gala? You were you were Than's date to the Shed Gala. Yeah, Than and uh, Than and I went to the Shed Gala. Actually, there's a pretty sweet video about that. Um, but Shed Aquarium is pretty impressive. Um, it's definitely one of my favorite ones in the country. Why do you like it? I like it because it's right there on Lake Michigan. They have. The people they have there um, are really passionate. Staff. The staff there is really passionate about uh, what they have on hand. And they have a good variety of animals, dolphins, whales. So overall, it was a great experience. Good time to go through. So do you remember the first time we went to the Shed Aquarium together? It was many years ago. It was a long time ago. Do you remember what I was most fascinated with at the Shed Aquarium? Was it the seahorses? It <laughs> yes. Was the seahorses. Yes. And so Lawson told me, I was kind of, like, Lawson and I had not, I don't know, we'd, we'd been together forever, so it had probably still been a long time. But I've been always fascinated with seahorses, and Lawson was like, they just die. They always die. So you should share your successful seahorse stories in chat. Does anyone in chat have a successful <laughs> seahorse story? Than, do you have one? I've never had a seahorse my whole life. So, you know what, that, you were probably giving me a leading question, and I totally botched it. What, on the aquariums? The politically correct answer, as far as public aquariums go, clearly is Shed. Yes. No, 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 no. I was just talking to Lawson about Shed because aquar public aquariums are something I have done with these guys quite a bit, and so it's something that I can speak to because I don't have a lot of good substantive knowledge on coral, so... We can have a sort of topical quest, sort of topical conversation on public aquariums because I've been to a lot of them just as a tourist. His bathroom, by the way, Casper, is right around the corner here, so it's just a quick little. It's right off to the side, stage right. Yeah. Oh, so, Harkins Aquatics likes Shed. Shed is Shed is a great aquarium. Um, so if Harkins Aquatics has done some work there, can you give some props to the Shed Gala? And if so you're in the hobby... I need to get back to that Shed Gala. Because that was so much fun. Absolutely. It was... It was like a legit 
one percenter party. <laughs> no, it was so much fun though. Like it was so one percenter that I opted out. But you know, so my new law firm has an office in Chicago, and uh -huh. now if you're gonna go next year, I would be very interested in joining you. Okay, so the, so part of the reason why we couldn't have like a bigger group go to Shed Aquarium was because the gala tickets started about $1,000. Title Gardens but should have covered Gardens it. Title Gardens could sponsor it. Title Gardens is broke as hell. Title Gardens needs to get a table a for giveaway. Shed Aquarium. I think a giveaway for your, for some of for your, the YouTube. for some of your YouTube, your YouTube super chatters maybe. Yeah, all, all the, super chats. I need to see much larger super chats for me to take <laughs> my friends to some one percenter gig at Shed Aquarium. No, the, how the YouTube. People, how many people does a table hold? Uh, I, I think a table is 10. A table is about 15 to 25 grand. So maybe you offer two spots up. <laughs> we, I think Tidal Gardens can really take care of the YouTube community I think and the not, fans. Also, we're not gonna get invited back. <laughs> Probably not, but I don't know. So, <laughs> so Lawson was my plus one, okay? There you go. He lobbied hard to be my plus one. I was like, Lawson, I was thinking about taking a hot date. And he's like, if you happen to not take a hot date, I'm gonna go ahead and lobby straight up to be your your plus one to this uh, this thing at Shed Aquarium. The problem was Dan couldn't find a hot date, so Lawson, Lawson was the backup plan. No, 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 no. Lawson carrot sticked the whole thing by saying I'll pay for the room the whole weekend. And I was like, hot date's out of here. <laughs> Give and, me the free room. And really, like, deserves the credit for booking the room that was all me i don't know if lawson gave me due credit for that but not. that was that was definitely me he did not and then and then our nephews randomly were coming up that weekend so i got stuck babysitting the nephews and lawson went to chicago with you and i couldn't entice my nephews i was like hey you guys want to go to chicago we can see your uncle and we can hang out we can do some chicago things and they're like nah we're good we're good with our cell phones they're teenagers Kids. Yeah. Well, teenagers. Mm -hmm. It's like. <clears throat> Missing chat here. Let's see. Oh, there's some seahorse stories. Yeah. Some people have had good, good success with seahorses. You know, these days, I think seahorses are much less challenging than they've ever been. I just still haven't, um, haven't given them a huge try. Why is that? What has made them easier to keep? Um, I think more than anything, it's just like feeding has gotten better over over the years. And that was like really the big challenge is just, you know, keeping them fed. If I understand that the, the challenge correctly. Mall of America has a better aquarium than Shed. I haven't been there. Yeah, I've never been to Mall of America. Minnesota? Is it Minnesota? Yes. yes. Minneapolis, I think. Patreon. Yeah, I think Patreon is good is good fodder for people who might be able to get a spot on the Tidal Gardens table at the Shed Gala next year. The oh. 2019 Shed Gala. Do we, we do like a like a, a raffle or something like that for like all, all, all the previous pa the, the pe previous patrons? Lawson, will raffle and I, off Lawson seat. and I will both go. It's um. It's a black tie affair. So I, I actually wore this. During that, that that occasion, it's a lot of fun. Minus the bird mask. Minus the, you know what? The bird mask would have flown just fine at that Ooh, place. We've got a lot of Minnesota Minnesotans. Minnesota. Is that the brown jug, brown jug game? Minnesota versus Michigan. It might be. Yeah, there's there's a lot of Minnesota connections recently. Like a Minnesota professor came and and uh, visited the greenhouse yesterday. Oh really? Chalice. Uh, Jennifer Ritchie uh, snagged that Pink Floyd. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, I mean, like the, the Pink Floyd chalices, they used to be really expensive, and I think that we just had it on for like 25 or 35 bucks. Matthew Clegg, good night. Wish I could keep watching, but time zones suck. Great show. Thanks. Thank you so much for attending, Matt. Appreciate it. So Debbie Lane says, Happy Halloween from South Florida. Hey, what's up, Debbie? We're big fans of South Florida. I don't know about fans. I, fans, I, fans I, I've, I've forgiven. So so we I, I went to South Florida, um, to Miami before LeBron left 
Cleveland, went to Miami, never went back. And you said you were never coming to Miami again when LeBron left. Yeah, I said something like that. And burned I had not the jersey. Burned the jersey. I did not burn the jersey. Still have it. But um but then he came back, won a championship with Cleveland, and it's like, you know what, go wherever the hell you want. Honestly, I don't care. LeBron was five minutes from here. It's like, do whatever you want. We're all old men at this point. <laughs> Be happy. So, you know, I think I've forgiven Miami. You should go back. We had some good times there. My fish tanks are being manufactured in Miami right now. There you go. <laughs> so there's that. Sh uh, did I just, like, miss the... Uh... So Ellery Wong had said something about shit, but then retracted it. So I will not comment on that. Uh, Minnesota is about as boring as it gets. We have corn, beans, more corn, <laughs> some tree groves, and send some more corn. You used to have Prince. Hey, also, 10,000 lakes. Coach. What? Row, Row in the boat. boat. I didn't, I missed that. P the football coach. PJ? P PJ? PJ Fleck? PJ Fleck, yes. The Minnesota, the Minnesota football head Fo coach. University of Minnesota. He is he was formerly the head coach at Western Michigan University. In mm -hmm. Kalamazoo. In Kalamazoo. So he had a famous saying. Row the boat. So all the Minnesotans will know that. Should know that. That sounds dumb. <laughs> It's about the team it's about, yeah, being moving a team forward together. The effort you have to, to move work forward together to row the boat. <laughs> this is a foreign concept to lots to fans. I was on the crew team at Michigan. Really? For like a split second. Really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah think, I'm like, like that, the that, right that's, right or something. That's dumb, even for <laughs> for that standard. <laughs> The reason why I'm not on the crew team any longer, besides the fact that I'm old, was because like I had like a this, a class scheduling conflict. Oh, okay. But since since I left, like um, I think Michigan beat Ohio State and Harvard. The crew. <laughs> <laughs> we we can row boats better than Harvard. <laughs> oh boy. Once you get up north, is this up north Minnesota? Because up north is a phrase that works in Michigan too. Yeah. For largely a retirement state. Woods with Lake Heavens. It sounds like Michigan. See, I think that Michigan and Minnesota are like sister states. Yeah, it could be. I mean, they're kind of across lake. They, they both they both have Lake Superior frontage. The kids' braces were 5K this month. I can't afford coral. Get an HSA. <sighs> You know, okay, this is this is going to be really off topic. Um, there's this whole industry because, like, if you if you so I, I have a lot of inter international viewers on on our live shows. So this might be an alien concept to you guys, but healthcare in the United States is very expensive for not a lot of good reasons. So Lisa's Aquatics, she's in Canada. No clue what the heck we're talking about, probably. I don't know if Reef Dudes, uh, Devin, if you're still on, also in Canada. Oh, so Lisa could have answered that whole, like, can you drive to Canada with coral question. I don't know. It comes up every show. But, like, it's very expensive in the U.S., and there's not a lot of good reasons why it should be. So there's this entire industry called medical tourism which used to be rich people from overseas, like in Saudi Arabia or something like that, coming and getting medical treatment here. But more and more, it's Americans that are doing okay-ish enough to go overseas to get medical treatment. And Well, I think, well, this can happen in the U.S. as well. But if you are willing to pay cash for whatever it is that you need and do the whole procedure outside of your insurance... You might be able to negotiate with your healthcare provider in the States or elsewhere in the world because if you're not working through insurance and it's a cash or credit payment, mm -hmm. you know, it's not a, a through insurance, that saves the provider some, some level of cost because they don't have to worry about billing your insurance. Yeah. I mean, so we've both had LASIK. Eye surgery? Yeah, LASIK is totally outside it's, of insurance. Yeah, it's totally outside of insurance. It's like cash payment sort of thing. So I don't know if your kid's braces were like that, 
But um, dental care usually has like a one thousand dollar a year maximum or something, which is nothing when you when you talk about braces or any sort of major major work. Yeah, but I thought that my experience with getting LASIK was like the best thing ever. There was like no like weird paperwork or anything like that. It's like, hey, this is how much it costs. Cool, let's do it. Yeah. Well. Uh, the acanthus my... fees are pretty high here, especially once you get into neurocardiosurgical. So, like, I, I is that Canada? What are you talking about? Please charge Roomba. <laughs> I have robot maids. Uh, Lisa, it's like free healthcare. Braces we pay for, my daughter's diabetic supplies I do pay for, but surgeries and such are covered. So I always joke about this. So when, is, when are braces absolutely needed? Like, uh, so I had really terrible teeth. As I, I, I saw I saw her pre-surgery mouth. It was... It's like a horror movie. It was like the Star like Pit in Star Wars. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know why we're still friends. <laughs> But, but thousands like, of dollars worth of orthodontia worked for me. Yeah, um, and so okay, this this is like a tangent, but it's relevant. Okay, Americans love to rag on the British for their lack of like you know teeth fixing uppers, but little do people know, like everybody in the U.S gets braces so all your jacked up tooth genetics are just going generation to generation everybody here gets like braces that's just a thing and so like but we still rag on like the british for their jacked up teeth it's like no no no, no. we have the same jacked up teeth if not worse we my, my teeth are great i did not have braces really yes like totally natural i'm superior crop mm. from burma Lawson. <laughs> Lawson and I both had braces. That's the U.S. <clears throat> uh, yeah, our dentist will totally negotiate with us if we just, you just... The thing is you have to ask for it. It's kind of like the LASIK thing, although the, the surgeon who did my LASIK, it was not a negotiation situation because he was probably the best in the entire state of Michigan. So good that Dr. Dave... So our, our, our friend, Dr. Dave, which I've mentioned a couple times during this broadcast, he is a world famous eye surgeon. Yes, but he doesn't do LASIK. He doesn't do LASIK because that's like, that's Not like Walmart surgery, okay? It's like he doesn't do Walmart surgery. He does like challenging surgery, like if a gorilla needs eye surgery or something. But the thing about, the thing about it is he recommended my eye surgeon and Lawson's been asking. So my, my eye surgeon sadly passed away and... So Dr. Dave won't recommend anyone for Lawson because he's like, yeah, the guy who you should have had do it died. And that's like, that's it. Like, that's all he says. Like, there's no, okay. there's, there's no, there's no backup. Well, okay. And having said that, I think LASIK is such a dumb, boring procedure. Okay. So hold on. Hold on one second there. All of the work in LASIK is the pre-op. Yes. conversation and whether they think you're a good candidate whether they think you're going to have successful results or not so you actually want the surgeon who might tell you like this isn't for you uh all those people will be replaced by machines in 10 years continue anyway so i don't even know i don't even know what my point was but my guy was really really good and so it wasn't like i was gonna say Oh hey, so can you just you know knock six hundred bucks off this, and we can call it an even three grand or something? But no, it was just it was like this is what you were telling me, and you know I was there as a friend of a colleague of his, so I wasn't exactly trying to make any waves with my with my LASIK. But it's it's been fantastic. I I didn't obviously, negotiate either. I didn't. Our results are not that. necessarily typical, yeah. but we love it. Yeah, long story short, I think that like cash-based medical care, pretty good. I, you know, as I get I, as I get older and like crumpier, I, I expect to like take more vacations based on like, you know what? I think I want to have surgery in Portugal. <laughs> that sort of thing. Just random surgery. I will drive. So we have like a world famous medical institution here. 
called Cleveland Clinic. It's like, oh, they, they, they're they so nice. They have these, this opulent, garish campus, medical campus up in Cleveland. And I'm like, I'm going to drive right past Cleveland Clinic, get on a plane, go someplace else, and then have my procedure done. Who's Crazes? Crazes Reef Tank. Yes, I made a live show again. It's been hard being a tattoo artist, but I'm busy most weekends. Hello, Than. Hey, what's up, Crazes Reef Tank? We were talking about tattoos. Someone was asking about what kind yeah, of sleeve hey, they hey, should get. Somebody, Craze... Uh, somebody wanted to um, to have an Acropora on their sleeve. Yeah, connecting connecting people. That's yeah, you there you go. Here. I mean, it's sort of like Korean girls getting eye surgery. It's not necessarily needed, but so you know what's oh. really weird about the Korean chicks? Um, Do you remember? First of all, I'm sorry to totally interrupt that train of thought. But remember when we were in the Okinawa airport and we went into that photo booth and they. Fo- yes. They like filtered and photoshopped all of our photos, and part of it was the eye widening. Yeah, they they totally like made us look like Korean me. pop stars or <laughs> Japanese J pop stars. Um, what's really weird about Asia is like when you talk about like like the you know the people that have like some sort of like uh, industry connection, so they're like you know they're like promo girls or something like that, but they look like they all went to the same plastic surgeon. So all these girls look like the same girl. It's weird. Cuz like if you if you know what a Korean girl looks like, it's not like Hyuna or somebody. It's like they and so once there is like a Korean pop star, the plastic surgery all goes in that direction. They all look like that girl. It's like the weirdest like cultural phenomenon. So the way that like Americans get braces, people in Korea have plastic surgery to look like k-pop stars so casper says costa rica is a good place to get dentistry for cheap so you should go there we've been to panama i've heard of a lot of that stuff and you know what i had i had like a i had had some dental stuff done here i totally should have gone to costa rica it's way better than going down the street there you go because there's you know just costa rica costa rica is nice if you have an emergency it's kind of hard to like oh i gotta fly to costa rica right now we we were also talking about it's cheaper what is the face tattoo people would recommend for Than? <laughs> I like this question. We were talking about Post Malone. So, okay, for the young people in the crowd. So okay. the question, if, if anyone didn't hear it, it was, what face tattoo should Than get? <laughs> so we, so I, was, um, I was watching this video. So I don't know how this got recommended to me because I have like zero tattoos. But there was like this channel on YouTube that was recommended to me about like you know tattoo people and they're talking specifically about how celebrities have terrible tattoos and oftentimes it's because celebrities don't pay for anything like everybody gives celebrities stuff for free so you know we're talking about post malone he's like this rapper because it's like a rapper question i mean he's a rapper that sings he's like a singing drake or something and he has like face tattoos that are all like letters Money sign. Money sign face tattoo. <laughs> Chris can probably hook you up with that. <laughs> so he's Rainbow like, Monty. So like a great big no. So these people like were, how like forehead, one cheek, and one cheek O. Oh, I'm curious about this no. <laughs> so like they're talking about how this guy's face tattoos, like there there are tattoo artists that specialize in scripting and clearly post malone went to none of those people for his scripting and they're like hey post malone if you're watching this video like holler at me because i will fix your face xenia teardrop tattoo Oh, Chris is free for you. So, I, so I, I get, I, so I'm, like, I'm gonna get that celebrity. But against only on his face, please, <laughs> only on his face. <laughs> so okay, so Dean the Canthus Reef, saying with the, the big no on the face. Okay, so yeah. that's kind of like this inside joke as far as like the, the this community goes because um, Rico uh-huh. is pitching me. He's another YouTube creator. He always pitches me his harebrain schemes, okay? About how I should do this, how I should do that. And my answer to like 90% of them is no. 
Like off the off the rip, absolutely no. Does he do them? Does he still try some of them? Um, no, because he he needs title gardens to do it. Okay. So, okay, so I always say no. Just to you for yeah. title garden to participate. So I always say that like you know like like I'm fan, aka title gardens, aka Doctor No, <laughs> and so that that aka El Chapo. What if you got like. Dr. No from the James Bond movies, like, face tattooed over your whole face. <laughs> well, here's the problem with that. Like, we were joking about, like, me dressing up as Dr. No for Halloween. But that's, Maybe like, a year. 1950s era thing. Do you know what talk- Dr. So, no even looks like? Okay, Does wait. anybody but, out there even know who Dr. No hold, is? Hold on. LeBron, or James Bond. LeBron did Pennywise. <laughs> What's that have to do? <laughs> I'm just saying you could do it. Doctor No, nobody would know that I was dressed up as Doctor No. Uh, I love all I love. <laughs> I love all these comments about face tats for you. No good artist wants to travel with a rapper. <laughs> Than Doctor No, uh, I I never understood the face tats. I have many, including the back of my neck. Face was too much for me. <laughs> too much for a lot of people I yeah think is like but you know I it's think, like a soundcloud rapper thing but also if you're gonna be on youtube for the rest of your days you know i think face tats are a problem if you need to be in the mainstream employment market fan is odd YouTube. job for halloween casper i'm not that fat oh odd job i'm not that fat <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, it, it's it's like that scene from uh, like Forty Year Old Virgin. It's like uh, you're using a lot of big words right now that are that I don't understand. So I'm gonna take that as disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, speaking of respect, well, it's actually about Forty Year Old Virgin. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've been like getting a ton of mileage out of that. I use that whenever I can. About respect. Yeah. Put put some respect on my name. Yeah. So okay, so somebody somebody knows uh, who Doctor No is. Chris is like, I'm a professional. Harkin says yes, yes to Doctor No. <laughs> I'm a prof- so so many tattoos, still no face tattoos. But there you go. Wait, but I want to know if Craze will do a face tattoo on Than. Well, he said he'd do it for free. Well, yeah, but I just didn't know if that was if that included face or if. Craze is just like no face tattoos for himself personally, but he'll happily do them on Than or any other customer who would like them. A star on the brow ridge is the cringiest thing. Oh, Dark Crystal. Oh, nice reference to Dark Crystal. Oh, Dark I Crystal. Lawson, I know Lawson appreciates that. Yeah. That's like uh, that's like Dark Universe Jim Henson. I'm much more of a Labyrinth fan in terms of the Dark Universe. Oh, how about, wait, wait, wear padding and a bowler. Okay, then. Oh. How about Bolo from Bloodsport? Get yoked. Um, yeah. <laughs> Lawson's in the next room just laughing at that. Um, so, I was, okay, so, okay, so I, I've got another friend. He's been on the live show before just once. His name's Sigi. And he does a YouTube, uh, like, tech uh, device review channel. And we have, like, this inside little joke that I'll share with you. Because, like, we have haters on YouTube. It's, it's part of the YouTube experience, right? And so uh, I always joke to Sigi about and this. We'll eventually get back to the whole Bolo thing. Um, we we I, I joke to him about this is the best way to get back at your YouTube haters is to low-key flex on all of them with ridiculous wealth. So, like... <laughs> So he's doing like a review about like a piece of camera equipment. And what is he shooting? He is shooting like a Porsche GT3, <laughs> like that sort of thing, you know, like it's over the top. It's like, oh, when I went to Italy and I'd shot all this footage with my drone, it's like, yeah, it's like, oh, here's my Spanish villa. And it's just like thing after thing after thing about flexing. So whenever he shows something like this on Twitter about like, you know, his, his, his camera gear reviews, which is like in some opulent Russian oligarch level thing. I always post like like an animated uh, GIF or GIF of like something silly, and one of them was Bolo from like uh, um, what was it was uh, one of these like kung fu movies or like blood sport or something like that, just like flexing, <laughs> and it's like this thing after thing after thing about it, just like, flexing on your haters. So anyway, 
<laughs> that, that's what that was from. Labyrinth. <clears throat> Dark Crystal. Never thought anyone ever know of it. Dark Crystal is like OG. And Dicanthus Reef is is giving me props for knowing Labyrinth. Yeah, that is some like a. Uh, that is like you know teenage era. So well, I was not quite a teenager when well, Labyrinth came out. I met the girl. Oh yeah. What's her name? What's her name? The girl in Labyrinth. Lots of Lawson knows. knows. He's he's just he's not gonna get it. He's googling. Yeah. Um. <laughs> uh. Sh so do you want to know? So my story is that I was younger than the girl in the movie, but I did have a. My brother was about the age of the baby in Labyrinth, and. I am several years older than my brother, and that labyrinth gave me nightmares for years because, like, I kind of wish my brother didn't exist, and he was kind of annoying. Well, you know, like in the movie, you know, the girl is like, mm -hmm. but my brother's old, older now, and we're grown ups, and of course, I love him very much, and like, he was kind of a pain in the ass. Whoa, baby, Jennifer Connelly. Jennifer. Oh, I thought you were talking about the character name. Mm, I don't know. I don't know who she, she was the character. But yeah, Jennifer Connelly. Like teenage era Jennifer Connelly. Uh, practical effects have a special place in my heart. Yeah, The Thing is my favorite, favorite example of amazing practical effects. The Thing. Yes. Good call, Casper, on that. John Carpenter. The Thing. Do you remember? So this goes I'm back to the Halloween familiar, horror thing. but I don't. It's like the shape-changing thing in the Arctic. With uh, Kurt Russell. I didn't. I didn't see it. I don't know. I mean, maybe I saw it. I don't. She's know. not exactly comic book girl nineteen. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, but it was. It was a really good like horror flick because the, the I way mean, that... we can talk about Dune. I read Dune. You did? Yes. When? I actually read that uh, between first and second year of law school. I read Dune. See, did you ever tell me that before and I just missed it? I'm sure I did. I'm sure you didn't, because I would have gone geek crazy over that. Yeah, we like, can talk about it. We Dune can talk is about, like I one can talk of about Dune. one of my absolute favorite like pillars of sci-fi ever. I feel like that is one of those books that you can like you know CBG nineteen did book club on it, and mm -hmm. I, I think you could do you could read that book again and again. You could read this kind of like Lord of the Rings in that way, where you could read it again and again and continue to get more out of it and continue to absorb because it is so it is so nuanced yeah dune is I mean, an absolute sci-fi masterpiece we talk about this all the time i think i've sent you like many memes with blue-eyed cats or the spice <laughs> flow. dune special edition movie is like an hour of extra footage so much better oh, I the hate, book okay, okay so if you're talking about the movie what what is the movie what is the movie that you have on vhs the dune movie the spice is life David Lynch. Yeah. No, I am not here for that. That will put me to sleep hold, in hold like on, okay. 15 minutes or less. But hold on. I did read the book and liked it. Okay, hold on. The, the, the book is... So every book snob <laughs> Casper says... Casper is so right. We're a bunch of old nerds. Every, yeah. every book lover says that the book is better than the movies. All right. In the case of Dune, it's because the movies or the, the, the miniseries on sci-fi were so such a departure from the book book that it becomes its own thing and not in a good way like so for for those of you that are unfamiliar with dune basically all the good ideas in star wars were stolen from dune and frank herbert the author of dune sued george lucas successfully and all that stuff okay, okay. just to interrupt to mention something that was in in chat lawson did you know that the labyrinth is being adapted to a musical no i didn't it's practically a musical in theatrical form yeah, I mean it is, but anyway, that's cool. I'm curious to know like when that's coming out. Is that going to be on Broadway? Uh, Dicanthus Reef, if you have any information about that, just feel free. Because actually, it. these guys are very likely to hit up a musical. Yes, I saw a musical with them. But it was like I, I've I've seen maybe like three musicals ever. What did you see with us? I saw Les Mis with you guys. Oh, I love Les Mis. Les Mis is probably <laughs> my favorite. Yep, here we go. Uh, so actually, funny. You want to hear a Les funny, Rob. funny anecdote about Lavis? So Anne Hathaway won the Oscar for uh -huh. her role as Fontaine, Fontaine. in uh -huh. in the musical 
theatrical, 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 which is totally a robbery of Hugh Jackman, I think. But anyway, I am really good at voice recognition of actors and others. So Lawson and I were at Trivia on Tuesday night, and within like five seconds of hearing her Oscar speech, which was a clue, it was like this actress won an Oscar for this role, and here this is her a clip of her giving this speech. And instantly I heard it and I knew that it was, she was talking about her role as Fontaine. Speaking of Les Mis, I'm a big fan. <laughs> Les Mis, is, uh, obviously there's a reason why it's been playing for like 50 years. You look like a human coral. <laughs> legend. Oh, Lawson's a big fan of Legend. I feel like I should like trade places with Lawson. Wait, with Legend? Lawson. Wait, hold, hold on. Tom wait. Cruise? Gary, Gary McElmonkarum is, you look like a human coral. You know what, That that's safe enough. Eh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. What happened? what happened? Somebody got timed up. Don't worry about it. It happens. You know what? We, we've been actually very well behaved as far as like not getting banned or anything like that. It's all good. So I would have, you know what? Me being like, you know, Mr. Ban everybody, I would have let that go. Whatever. God Emperor, Crazed Reef to hit you up. I like it. He's, I think he's more aggressive than I was. You were, no, no, no. Okay, so I either like the last Halloween, the Halloween before, she was a moderator and she perma. So whenever I ban somebody, it's a permanent ban. Okay, there's none of this timeout stuff. I think she she hit like six people during that show. There's like people from ISIS. There's people from the KKK. They all got like perma banned. Well, you told me you said if anybody says anything like yeah. racist or inappropriate, it was like if somebody said something that's completely irrelevant and they had any sort of racist undertones, it's oh, like you're, you're gone, banned. Bomb. boom, gone, right? Okay, never a ending trail. story. Yes. Never, okay, so we so. Uh, Do you so, talk about this like every live show? Or no, something? we never talk about oh. it. But the thing about never ending story that that we always talk about, especially with Dr. Dave and I, is the scene with uh, with the horse. Yeah, the the swamp of yeah, eternal this is like the swamp of sorrow thing. Whatever it is, where like you know, like spoiler non, you can't spoil something that's thirty years old. But like the the, the horse like gives up in the swamp and like sinks down. Oh, oh. and it, it it literally is like the most traumatic, saddest thing of my childhood. Atreyu is the guy though, right? Atreyu is the, the guy. Horse is something. I else. forget the horse. What's the horse's name? Someone, someone, someone in chat knows the horse's name. But like the Swamp of Sorrows scene with the horse is like crushing for like six year old band. Like, our tracks. Our tracks. Our, our tracks. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Don't wow. give up. Wow. Yeah. Uh oh. Casper Meyer is like, I'm out of beer. It's dead. Bam. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> He's out. <laughs> oh, Jamie. Hey, what's up? Jamie is uh, Rico's wife. Uh, Reef Eco, Rico, call my name. Have you haven't you been here in chat, Re, uh, Reef Eco? I thought so. Atreyu, Atreyu's not the horse. Atreyu's the gu the, yeah. the kid. Uh, the Artrax guy. is the Artrax is the horse. Is yes. the horse? Yeah. All right, one more beer. We've been putting it down. Fan? Yeah, everybody's did you get, like, do you uh, want to trade with you, Lawson? Do you want to? <laughs> somebody was like, uh, sorry, I, like, I, I'll read it in just a sec. Uh, Ellery Wong, fan, you always have the most entertaining live sales. Yeah, we've talked about Coral for about 10 seconds this show. I'm if guessing. you want to talk about Coral, I should just switch places. I don't know, I think we should talk more about like blood sport. <laughs> About about like like early '90s martial arts films. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Or tap, about how tap, out, tap out, out of that. Or get, get yoked, Dan. Get yoked. Uh, it was the princess yelling at Treyu. Okay. Yes. Yes. You know what? I saw her. Okay. okay. Do you, is there some cultural reference to the whole ivory tower? Like she's in an ivory tower. Is that something? What What is the meaning of Never Ending Story? I watched it too young to like get, and he's like Sebastian's obsessed with books, and it's about stories. I, I and think literature. it's a, it's a, it's about like the power of imagination and how um, like mm. people should embrace. Oh, we just sorry, we just opened another dragon's milk. We ah. have lots of dragon's milk. Yeah, not not that one. Nope. Yeah, so we're so so we were drinking Christmas ale, and we're now back onto New Holland dragon's milk. 
Uh, so no chase twin total. How many items? We're gonna go to two ten. Uh, crazy. Thank you. Coral speak for themselves. I mean, look at those beautiful things. Appreciate it, man. Uh, what beer is it, uh, Thomas Poindexter? Right now we're on um, New Holland Dragons Milk Barrel Aged. Two, please. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, two, please. Appreciate all the super chats. Appreciate your your participation. You've been a regular on many a stream. So have a good one, man. <laughs> Product plug, not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. What light would be good on a 40 breeder? New to the hobby. So you could do any number of things. If you wanted to go like the LED route, any of those like 12 inch fixtures, whether it be like an Ecotech Radeon, AI, whatever, any of those would work. If you wanted to go like inexpensively, you could go with anything um, like T5 fluorescent based, even just getting like a cheap Amazon T5 fixture. Uh, we've been experimenting with those forever. They're great. Um, speaking of lighting, when we were in Japan, you had the opportunity to explore some innovative yeah, so, lighting. So one of the cool things about being like a YouTube personality is that you meet people through YouTube. And one of the guys that I met Should totally was in. Vlad. Vlad, sorry. We sometimes, like, I don't know why, but we sometimes like mistakenly say Ivan when we mean Vlad. But he's this guy, he's been living in Japan for like 16 years has a family there and he took us around all over the place. And so in a part of Japanese culture is like Does Vlad log on to your live streams from time sometimes, to time? Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. Know. Not he's on now or he's not? Is he? I don't I know. know. We haven't heard. So if, so Vlad, if you're on, cool. Say hi. Um so, so so like he just took us all around Tokyo and he wouldn't let us pay for anything. Like he so was first so he generous. took us to an amazing teppanyaki? Yeah, he took a, like a really like, like great like, little place where you, know, you, you, you cook everything on, on your table and stuff. He took us to Tokyo Sky Tree. Which didn't he do some work on the website? Right, yeah, because he, he's like a web developer. He did it like a, he did their website. Um, but, the, but the best part, before he took us to Tokyo Sky Tree, he took us to this like, after little... we had lunch. So we met him for lunch, and mm -hmm. then he was chatting with Dan about this coral shop he knows who's doing some cool things with lighting. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I can take you there. And we were all crazy jet lagged. This was our third day in Tokyo. Yeah. And he's like, I can take you there. And then we all said yes, and our day took a crazy turn from that point. Because we on. were only going to have lunch, because like yeah. we've never met Vlad before. It's like so. Half the people you meet in this industry, in this slash hobby, are nuts. You just <laughs> you just never know when like you're. You, let's have let let's left have lunch with this guy, and it just goes the wrong way real fast. Okay, it happens lot so we're just like we're only going to commit to lunch with vlad we never met him before he might be cool he might not so we hung out he's cool and we went to this like little uh, local fish store and this local fish store is the size of like my living room it's very small but this guy was doing like some collaborations with like uh kyosara which is like the like a kyoto based mega international conglomerate that like makes LED lighting, and he's doing all this research on lighting. And if you want to know more about this shop, or if you want to see this shop, your video. Yeah, on... check out like check out our little uh, Japan video trip, and you can see even like some of like the um, some of like the footage shows like the lighting there. It's, it was it was pretty impressive. I don't know where that's gone since. Uh, we need to kind of like you know touch base with Vlad. But and... well, I'm sorry, I was distracting you with like the Tokyo things about uh -huh. the Vlad visit and which was fantastic. But share what was cool about the lighting. Why why it was cool that remember, weren't they doing like UV they were trying to match the UV to what yeah, exists so, in the real world. Right. So this guy, uh this shop owner, would actually go to the places where the individual corals were collected. And he had like an underwater housing made for like this light meter. Like a spectrometer. Yeah, it's like a, it's like it's like a spectrometer. So it's not like one of those apogee units that just tells you the par value. It also gave you like a spectrum analysis. So it was it's like a three thousand dollar light meter. And then he would take it underwater and take readings everywhere in Australia, for example. And based on that, Kyosara would then create LEDs 
based on on those measurements. Taking off, mom. Bye, mom. Bye. Okay. I'll see what I can do. Yeah. I'll see what I can do. Okay. Bye. Bye. So mom and dad are leaving. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for the food. Any supplemental light with a UV spec? So Thomas Poindexter, if you have access to T5, um, I would look at the ATI True Actinic bulb because that actually has like some near UV spectrum in there. For someone seeking brilliant colors, what if any supplements has worked best? That's going to be a toughie. Um, I don't know if anybody else in chat knows, but like if you're talking about like an SPS type of system, like a lot of people are gravitating towards like feeding with like amino acids and stuff like that. That tends to help quite a bit. We kind of ran out of our, uh, out of our amino acid stuff. So we haven't done that lately, but I think that does help. So I, I've got a story. Um, we sell to one of our, our own big suppliers. It's kind of funny. We joke about it because it's like I buy a bunch of corals from him. He buys a bunch of corals from me. So we're, we're basically like handing checks back and forth. But he tested he he tests his water a lot more than I test my water. And so he was really impressed with the coloration of our corals. And, you know, and he does his own set of aquaculture. And he wanted to see like what he could do in his systems to kind of match ours. So he tested our water. He tested our water at three point something alkalinity, DKH. So meaning it should be closer to eight or nine, but it was like measuring out at three, three. Um, and so we were like, that's usually when stuff is bad. <clears throat> So we, we looked into it and what had happened was that our calcium reactor, which was like, like, so we always just monitor our calcium reactor through our pH probe in the reactor. So it's like, oh, pH is such and such, everything is fine. But it wasn't fine because our this particular reactor that was on that system uh, had basically dissolved all the calcium media in there. So it was basically running just empty. We're just carbonating salt water for like months. And so over the, the, that course, you know, the, 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 P, uh, the, sorry, the pH, the alkalinity in that system had dipped from eight all the way down to three point something. And it was still looking good. Ah, I'm referring to supplements such as magnesium, calcium, etc. Okay, so if you're looking for that type of supplementation, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be in a huge hurry to chase numbers. Because like I said, we were running at three point something alkalinity with fantastic results. I think more than anything, like stability is what you should be shooting for. So if you're going to be like doing like frequent testing, make sure that those numbers more or less match up. And if you're going to change any of those numbers, go slowly. Now, if you were to ask my supplier what's important, he actually likes going with the two-part stuff rather than like the calcium reactor route because he's actually gone with like really expensive calcium reactors. Um, like, uh, if you've ever heard of like the Destaco units, he uses like some calcium reactors that are, I think are roughly $5,000 wholesale, like really advanced systems, but he's had the best success going with just manually adding two part. But again, uh, most important thing, go with what's consistent. So Dan, what are some of the corals that you would want to get into your systems that you don't have right now? So our biggest, like the biggest hole in our portfolio is probably Acropora. Like the, uh, we've, we've done better year after year after year with Acropora, but long story short, um, the greenhouse is not the ideal system for Acropora. And so that's, a large driving force with going with a new warehouse style building 
is that we want to have like razor sharp control over a lot of stuff, which is kind of needed for these things that don't like a lot of fluctuation. Our stuff fluctuates like crazy right now in the greenhouse. A lot of temperature fluctuations, a lot of chemistry fluctuations, but all of that I expect is going to be like nailed on real solid. So if anything, it would be more towards like those branching small polyp stonies. Does amino come in a bottle? Yes. So there's a bunch of different brands that sell amino acids. Now, so here's the thing about amino acids. Amino acids are super, super duper dirt cheap. If you want to just buy it off the shelf. I mean, it is like the building blocks of protein. Super mega cheap. HGH. HGH. Yeah. But if you wanted to go with like a simple out of the box solution, like Brightwell Aquatics, Two Little Fishies, any number of these brands, they will sell you uh, an amino acid supplement. So if you wanted to do that simply, you can. Decanthus Reef is saying, so Acropower. So Acropower would be the Two Little Fishies brand. There's, there's many, it's amino acids, guys. Like, you just can't mess it up. Uh, Murphy. Murphy says some aminos can be magnesium-based, though. It's always uh, good to keep an eye on mag when dosing aminos. There you go. I haven't personally had that experience because we, we tend to run lower magnesium anyway. But if you are doing a lot with aminos, um, yeah, definitely check on that. Also dripped calc washer and things like magnesium potassium is drip while running above for different reasons. Okay. I'm looking to dosing milk and honey in the farms. Um, I don't know if you're joking about that. I can't imagine that's a good idea. <laughs> But you know what? I thought people were joking about vodka. They weren't. Um, so so people were, were... Corals like booze too. No, they don't like booze. <laughs> so they were dosing vodka as an inexpensive source of carbon to fuel bacteria growth. And that bacteria would directly um, bind up phosphate and nitrate. Does that work? It does. But it's really volatile. And how many people lost their tanks to that? So it's like, uh, I'm going to dose of vodka. Gary says you look nice. Thank you. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I love this jacket. I absolutely love it. But clearly, it's like a black tie evening jacket. I live in a not so cosmopolitan area in Ohio. That's why, that's why Tidal Gardens needs to sponsor a table at Shed Aquarium Gala 2019. Yeah. <sighs> For I, the Patreons. I don't know how I would get that to work. I think somebody should super chat if they think you should do this. Somebody would need a five figure super chat well, no, to make that work. Well no, somebody super chats now thinking it's a good idea. It doesn't matter how much it is. Just a super chat to say that fans should definitely do this. Hmm. Oh, so Craze Reef and Gary Montgomery, hug it out, guys. Make it work. Okay, so honey could be used as a sugar dosing, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so it has to be a better way to do milk breaks that. down into amino acids and honey acts as a carbon dose. Okay, okay, I get that. When it comes to uh, like the like the, 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 the bacterial growth stuff. I'd like it in the sense that sometimes the bacterial growth directly feeds corals. I am hesitant when the bacteria is used as an ultra low nutrient method of filtration. Some people are, are like really into that. Um, very successful hobbyist, no question. But it's never worked on a system like mine that's, that's highly volatile. Um, uh, so, I tend to not want, want to go towards like an ultra low nutrient method of, you know, providing like a carbon source. But I do like the idea of promoting bacterial growth if it's part of like coral nutrition. Because, um, so one of my friends that does ultra low nutrient, he does, um, he does aquaforest. And aquaforest here went extremely poorly when we tried it. But for him, 
he likes that kind of that pastel starved, uh, you know, like really skinny model look in his Acropora. But it also works really well for his Ganiopora in his LPS tank. So like he grows Ganiopora 10 times faster than we can. And I suspect a lot of it has to do with it feeding on bacterial growth as a part of that aquaforous ultra low nutrient bacterial stuff. And the, you know, the, the times that we did vodka dosing, it was really bizarre, but the water actually started smelling like alcohol. And so we actually had like some customers come over with, you know, like for, with an appointment because we're not open to the public generally. And one guy was like a recovering alcoholic and he actually smelled all this vodka in the water. And, and it's like, this is bad. <laughs> this is just a bad experience all around. Yeah, when it comes to like the weird chemical stuff, I tend to be a lot more, um, I guess, not so much conservative, but it's like a lot more just keep it simple. And I haven't really seen like a huge benefit with going with any kind of like carbon dosing, ultra low nutrient, whatever. So yeah, I haven't really messed with it much at all. And when I did, I didn't get great results, but I think in, in, a, in a hobbyist scale system, it does work a lot better. I have a question. What's up? How do you decide on your next travel destination? Repeat the question in case they don't. Okay, so if you didn't hear Suzanne, she said, how do you decide on your next travel destination? Um, it's It was kind of weird with this past decision. So we're going to Vietnam in January. Um, that would not have been my first choice. But it literally like fell into place. Like all of a sudden, Lawson, Suzanne, and I, are like like the travel trio. Like, like I'm, yeah. a, I'm a professional third wheel. They're professional like vacationers. So when we go places, so the worst thing, guys. I, I mean, some of you guys are younger. Some of you guys are older. <clears throat> the worst thing is when you guys actually have like, you know, the means to go on a big travel thing and to go with your friends. The worst thing ever is traveling with people that you're not compatible with it's like going on a bad tinder date that lasts a week and you're in a different country and you're spending thousands of dollars to be there you need to find people that are very complementary to your um you to your pace so we actually run at a pretty high pace when we're on vacation like we don't relax a lot so you, you, you kind of have to find your way um so we travel very well together. And so I and kind we of traveled together for a long time. Yeah, and, and we kind of like figured it out. And we always invite our friends and usually the answer with our friends is no, because you know, they're all so adults and they have like other adult things to do, being like lame and boring or whatever else. Oh, I can't take time off because of that blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> this time everybody said yes. So it kind of just like happened really quickly. What's up, Rico? I see you. Um, it just happened so quickly. Like everybody just started buying damn plane tickets to Vietnam. And I'm like, are we really going to Vietnam? Of all the places. So of all the places, like why? Because suddenly everybody's bought plane tickets. And all these people that we never usually vacation with, they're all going. And there's like seven of us. So I'm like, fine. The plane tickets are cheap. I'm just going to go along. But I, I am not beyond the, the, the possibility for hilarious drama to break out during this trip. <laughs> you, you might rub people the wrong way. Me? Yes, you. No. Never You're, me. You are on the questionable list for some people. Wasn't really? Wasn't was F the them. Mediators? <laughs> no, no, no. Sorry. sorry, they don't get to talk. Because last time I checked, they weren't with us for the last decade worth of vacations. True. Very Where the true. hell were they? Who were, Who are they? There's nobody. It's only me. <laughs> I'm the only one. That's well, my, it. My favorite is the time that we went to Okinawa. Who, I think that's just like the best. Who time. had questions about me? <laughs> Put some respect on it. Who? 
Where were these people? Huh? Who were these people? How dare they? Don't they know? Do you know who I am? Do you know who the hell I am? All right, we're getting to the good part of the live stream. <laughs> good. We, we, we have nine corals left to sort this out. Nine corals to flex on. Lawson has a lot of commentary on this. I feel like you should just totally tell him. Who's the rat in our group? We're starting the drama off early. Fans flexing right now, so Lawson, this is happening. Lawson, no. Lawson, are you the one that's questioning my, my vacation fidelity? <laughs> are you? I know your place. It's fine. We good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sagi is like, oh boy, I showed up at the right time. <laughs> uh Sagi, get back into the get back into the country. You and I have business too. <laughs> is he in Playa Mujeres? Playa Mujeres? Yeah. Isla Mujeres? Playa Mujeres is a place. It's a beach in Isla Mujeres? <laughs> Yeah, no, Fan is angry. You wouldn't like him when he's angry. Um, so he was at. No, will he? Will he? Will he let us know? Um, he went to some like really nice play. Um, uh, Sigi, take your talk. Um, he's a he is a club member at, not yeah. not dreams, but the same secrets. It's, it's the same. It's same, the same as us. It's the same. Okay. He went to some really nice place that I have not heard of before because there's like there's like fifty million resorts in Cancun. Oh yeah. But last time he was in Playa Mujeres. Was he? Yes, and you sent us pictures. I did. Hmm. Because we have we have membership there too. But I'm always very curious about where he's going because we have membership too. Interesting. So if if he would like to elaborate more, we would be very curious. Yeah, Sigi, let me know when you're back in this country. So, yeah. <laughs> I need to find out who the rat is in my travel group. All right, so we do have some actual coral questions. What are your thoughts on the panda goby? Is it necessary to keep a pasta or will it host another coral? Uh... Mr. Christensen, or Mr. And Mrs. Christensen, or Ms. Christensen. Uh, I've never kept one before. Maybe somebody else in chat knows better. Um, I have not. Secrets Playa Maroma. Oh, I've heard great things about that place. He was just there. He's flexing on his haters. Actually, this is awesome. Um, so, Sigi. We want to know how good it is. Suzanne would like to know if it was good. Uh, she just came from, what's your favorite one you just did? Villa Rolandi. Zoetry Villa Rolandi. Zoetry. Zoetry, okay. Okay, I cannot type the first symbol, so Christensen. <laughs> exactly. If they feed on, on the tissues, it may be more of an obligate relationship. If they feed on something external, it might just be an SPS host. There you go. There you go. Thanks for having me back there. <laughs> Can always count on chat to come through. Yes. When I'm like all fried out. Someone said that they were just waiting for you to get tipsy and they were super excited about that. I think I've been tipsy for about like the last 200 corals. You should go get the last dragon's milk and let Than finish it off in the last so we, half hour trip. So hashtag Bolo Flex. <laughs> Bolo, yes, get yoked. Than <laughs> get yoked. You need to do Bolo. I, 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 I joke so much about like uh, taking steroids. It's not even funny. But yeah, not yet. Go Google Bolo from uh, Bloodsport, guys. Bloodsport. <laughs> Billy Pipes, hello. Billy, you're so late to this party. <laughs> well, welcome, regardless. We've got a few corals left. All right. La is this the last Dragon's Milk? We are on the last Dragon's Milk. So we've had quite a bit. Already? Oh. Uh, this is... Oh, God. That's enough. We do this for your entertainment, people. 
Uh, the beach was killer. Food, drinks, and service were fantastic. So uh, a, 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 a big part of this is like you can't go wrong with uh, with some of those with some of those resorts there. Bolo from that Bruce Lee was less yoked. Okay, yeah, and then he went full on steroids for blood sport. Are are the corals pre recorded footage correct? They were shot yesterday. Neon green looks good. You guys are amazing hosts. LOL hard. Thank yeah, you, Tony. It's, it's a lot better three hours into drinking. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about that rat, though. I'm not <laughs> letting that go. <laughs> oh, no. It was who? Michelle. Who? Michelle who? Michelle in chat? No, Michelle Wong. Not in chat. <laughs> that was abrupt. <laughs> <laughs> you called her out? I'm calling out everybody. I'm calling on everyone. No one's safe. I, pr I promised her you were cool. <laughs> she should know better. She's traveled with us a lot. She has traveled cred. She has, uh, actually, she has tra so, not traveled with you a lot. Did, did, I have traveled with you a lot. I always like to remind people that we've traveled. Fan and I have traveled together okay. for 20 years. <laughs> And at all times, exactly. So they are the third wheel, not there. So Suzanne, okay. So when, when we went to okay. Okinawa, so I, first I have to tell you, yeah, I'm going to talk about Okinawa. Here, I'll let you so see. when we, we're, we're we're gonna so 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 item two ten is the last item, but this will just re go to number one. We we get we got sto we got vacation story time coming up. So, so Okinawa came about in a very strange way. Yeah. Lawson had plans to vacation with his family. Mm -mm. And this is I, had, go poorly. <laughs> I, I had previously vetoed the trip for unrelated reasons, and I had decided that I was going to stay home. Then, after I had made that decision, Dan texted me a link to flights to Okinawa for under, under $600. Okay, so I. There was some background here, yes. I was going to be going to Okinawa no matter what. I just happened to share such such deal with Suzanne, saying, check out this cool deal that I'm going to be going to Okinawa with, no matter what. Okay. So then I said, well, Lawson can't go because he has pl plans in place, but maybe I can go. And then <clears throat> I decided to go. Lawson was doing his other thing. And then... I, I don't know. I said maybe we can invite Erica, my friend from law school. And this was one of those trips that it, it was like five weeks in the future. So it was coming up on fairly short. We, we expect all our friends to say no to these things. Yes. But it was like, if you're cool enough to say yes, we're happy to have you join us. So she said yes, but I was going to say yes regardless. Like if it had just been me and Thane, So uh, So at this rate, I'm thinking, okay, I really didn't expect to go to Okinawa with, with two girls. Like that, I was I was like on my way alone, and suddenly, like, so when I mentioned it to Suzanne, she's like, "I'm down, let's go." <laughs> I mean, it was so like it was such a great deal in Okinawa. Like that's kind of cool. Yeah, um, and just so you know, like our our plane ticket to go from here to Okinawa was the same as it typically is to go from Tokyo to Okinawa. So it was a ridiculously good deal. Yeah, very so. good deal. So then. We decided that we were going. It's my over time, guys. Yes, that's true. My law school friend decided to join. And then, um, so we all bought tickets. Yes. So since they have gone to law school together, this girl, Erica. So, yeah, so then she thought like, oh, Than's going to be the third wheel on our girls trip. And then Lawson immediately sends her this photo of Than and I in New Orleans like 10 years ago. In, in Miami. This is back for no, a it was, pre... it, it was in it was in New Orleans when we were at Commander's oh, Palace you're right, when I was you're drinking right. the Bloody Mary. It was like 10 years ago when we were there for the NFC Championship. Than and I were in New Orleans when the Saints won the NFC Championship. For any New Orleans Saints fans out there, we happened to be there. We were Saints fans for the night. It was yes. pretty pretty cool. <laughs> But anyway, so Lawson sends Erica this photo. Like, Fan like, and Suzanne have been traveling together we've been for vacation a decade. Yes. Forever. Well, for like, yeah. not even a decade, it was like 15 years. Yes, it's this like, is photo. You just, you are a, a five minute stretch in this history of us vacationing. Like, yeah. you just went to law school with her. Fan went to law school because of a conversation with her four years before she even went to law school. Like, it was it was hilarious how like these 
these uh, these vacation rookies think they have anything to talk about me on vacation. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like, who are these people? I'm yeah. on, I'm I mean, on so the watch like, list. Like, like, like you're not on the we list. Like, we are the travel trio. We have been traveling together for a long time. But Eleanor, Shiloh, and I, and Lawson and I have traveled together for about the same amount of time. You guys happened. You. you guys happened to go to where they were living. So they were expats for a really long time, and we visited them in Italy. We visited them in Sweden a couple times. And Alan is so Lawson's Alan, oldest okay. friend. Alan and Michelle are two other couples, which. Which we have not discussed previously because it's really Lawson's friend more so than mine. Or anybody's, for that matter. <laughs> but um, yes, he, he's Lawson's childhood friend. And he's an expat, so he lived in Italy, he lived in Sweden. So these guys vacationed in Italy and Sweden. We also met up with them in Istanbul. They were not living in Istanbul. We met them there. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I did not know that. One vacation. In the past 30 years. In addition to the, our vacations to the places where they live. Where they were living. But Alan and or Michelle and Fan are sort of the same type of person. So it will be interesting to see them on vacation together. <laughs> Long story short, if things get crazy, I'm just going to go scuba diving all day. You can see me underwater and we can sign language at each other. Oh, it'll be great. I think it'll be good. Because it's totally Michelle. <laughs> I found the rat already. It was Michelle, wasn't it? She had some concerns. I told she her. had some concerns already. <laughs> I've talked to this girl three times I ever. Guys, actually, I think you met at New Holland. In Holland. This chick. It's going to be good. We're going to have a video from Vietnam, right? Tony, I was like, who are these people? Exactly. Who are these people? He, he retracted it. Uh, no, I saw that, Tony S. I saw that. Bay Area Reese. What's up, guys? Bay Area. You're, you're, you, you've, so we're you've in managed overtime. To... Does everyone like this? Or is this yeah, just we, we, like... Yeah, we've, uh, we've gone to overtime. Y'all go diving out there in Okinawa? I did. Yes. So did. this is kind of cool. So Than went diving on the worst day. So we were in Okinawa during shoulder season. We were there in April. And it is the time when, as the person at the hotel front desk explained to us, when their spring weather is changing from their summer weather. And so Okinawa is really cool. Anyone who has been to Hawaii, Okinawa is like Hawaii on steroids. I think it's like a more exotic version of Hawaii. The tides are crazy. You see all sorts of like coral just exposed during low tide. Which you see like you see like clams just like open in open air, that type of stuff. Yeah. It was a place that I did not want to go swimming or go into the water because I felt like there were so many creatures living there. It was their world, not mine. Yeah. it that, that Like the Okinawa experience essentially was like it, it solidified in me. It's like how a lot of people in this hobby try to say, oh, I want my tank to be like the ocean. That's simply not possible if you've actually seen the ocean, what it's capable of. Like, so just with the example with clams, okay? When I try to keep a clam, I do everything to dote on this clam. And then after about three months, it dies. But over there in Okinawa, it's the same Maxima clam. And they're every huge. single they're like, day. They're like this. They're like this. this they're huge. Thing. Yeah. And they're completely exposed during like low tide. And they're not like, oh, we're going to close up and be all protected during low tide. They're not. They're wide open, mantle open in open air. And then it's shoulder season, which you were talking about, where it's like rainy every day. So it's getting like rained on fresh water, wide open mantle. It doesn't care. Um, all these like other creatures. Like, we saw like, sea cucumbers. The sea we saw, cucumbers, sea slugs and everything. The, the shrimp, the, 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 are they uh, bullet shrimp? Uh, what, pistol what, shrimp. Pistol shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. All these things are like in open air, getting rained on. And you know, like if you've ever run, heaven forbid, an invertebrate or a coral under like fresh water, it dies instantly. They're, they're just getting rained on and they don't care. And it's like this, and, and I'm having like this, like this feeling that I need to save all these animals. But no guys, it's four o'clock. It's four o'clock every day for them. That's just how it is. And they're fine. So like the idea that like we're trying to like replicate a natural coral reef 
isn't a thing. But it was so crazy because it was so. I, I've spent a lot of time seeing fans' greenhouse and seeing Tidal Gardens facilities, which are amazing and very cool. But they don't feel like anything that I experience in real life. And then when we went to Okinawa, that is the one time that I felt like when we would walk the reef mm -hmm. during low tide and see all of these things out there and we would see like all of all of these creatures and fish and things just like out open for view it was a completely separate experience and i've seen quite a i've seen quite a few commercial aquariums public aquariums like i've sure. seen shed and obviously we went to kuroshio sea in, in okinawa and then there's been others i know but um <clears throat> it was very different to see this and then even seeing your footage from your dive where they're doing aquaculture and they're trying yeah to it was weird so all of this stuff by the way um if you just search my channel for Okinawa, you can see my pretty much my entire dive trip. You can see our like reef walk and all of that. So if you're curious to see what that looks like, it's all on video, right? We're all YouTubers. Yeah. Excuse me. And then also, have you seen? Have you been to the aquarium in New Orleans? I don't think you did that when we were in. New we Orleans. never did because I had a, I had a bad feeling that it would suck. Did you go to the? Did you? I don't think so. We've been to the. We've been to a bit, but. we've been to New Orleans like a million times. But we need to go to the aquarium just so you can just just to see it. I, I have a feeling it's gonna be a lot of fresh water. It's called the Aquarium of the Americas. Speaking of fresh water, Vlad took us to the Sum Sumida Aquarium, aquarium. at at uh, Tokyo Sky Tree, and that was where they had um, uh, guys. I can't remember his name. He's very famous freshwater aquarist. I'm drunk. You guys know it. You guys know it. Well, Lawson's not even sitting there to Google it. Lawson for us. doesn't know it. You guys know who who we're talking about. It's He's the Japanese. godfather of freshwater aqua uh, of freshwater aquascaping. Chat, help me out. Thirty second, thirty second uh, tape delay, right? But they they will know it. Amano, Takashi Amano, his like signature aquariums are all throughout Sumida Aquarium. R I P. Sensei Amano. <laughs> you know what's really weird? So so you and Lawson don't know this, but there is like this cultural divide between saltwater and freshwater hobbyists. It is like this, this, this turf warfare between the two sides. And it's so weird. Like, why are there sides? There, there they go. Like Takashi Amano? Yes, <laughs> Amano, ADA? Yes, yes, yes. He yes. passed recently. RIP, right? <laughs> thank you yeah so so we happen to see like hit like the the signature stuff so i i know inappropriate reefer isn't in chat right now but he was recently in in tokyo and he did like um uh, a, a video where he went to Samedia aquarium and he checked out a lot of those aquariums as well so check that out oh my gosh i just keep thinking i'm so tired when we were there, like all the all the footage we you have, were, I'm so tired. We were that was exhausted. the worst day of jet lag. So that was day three of jet lag. And if you, so Vlad, if you're watching this on replay or anything, dude, you're such a bro. If you're ever in yes. Akron, okay, you're not paying for nothing. All right. Well, we really need to just. If he comes to Macna ever, we just need to. Yeah, we're gonna hook you up, son. So yes. he. Vlad was amazing. I just I can't I can't say that enough, and I'm. I'm not I, a YouTuber. I'm not a. I'm not a reefer, but Vlad was awesome. We what a wonderful host. We went to uh, to Tokyo Sky Tree, and I'm like telling Lawson, like Lawson, okay, we're gonna go have drinks, go and pay for everything. Here you have like you know we have like stacks of cash. Go buy this thing, okay? And he goes over there, and the person that behind the counter does not speak Japanese, and so Vlad like kind of does like, not speak English. Or, I'm sorry, does not speak yeah. English. I'm sorry. So he goes over there and he's like, let me help you out. And he goes and just pays for everything. He wouldn't let us pay for anything all night. This guy would have, if if we didn't like nearly pass out from jet lag, he would have just kept us out all night, all day, all night, and just paid for everything. So he's like so cool. We apologize for not being great guests. <clears throat> But also, Vlad keeping us up, Vlad kept us up until like 9.30. And then, we were okay, so then out. after all of that, you haven't even mentioned this. After all of that, he took us out to this famous gyoza place in Harajuku. 
This famous gyoza shop. Uh, yeah, it's amazing like, like world-famous yeah. gyoza dumplings. So we had a couple beers and some gyoza, and that was phenomenal. And then finally we went back to our our hotel. And it was Which, like by the way, was like car service. Yes, he taxied us there, and we were like super cheap, so we were all like taking the subway and walking everywhere. Yeah, we got private car service to and get he, back to our he, hotel. He drove it. He had us taxi back to our hotel, and Vlad, of course, covered that too. And um, that actually helped us a lot in terms of our jet lag recovery because the one thing that you need to do with jet lag, I always tell people this, you really need to put yourself on the local time schedule. The problem for us was we were in Tokyo in November where it gets dark around 5 o'clock. So we would go to sleep every day around 5.30 in the evening. If you go to sleep at 5.30 in the evening, you're probably going to wake up at 3.30 or 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much our schedule, but Vladcast kept us up until like 9.30 9, that 10, night. 10, 11. And so then <clears throat> from that next morning, we were able to, to sleep in until like 6, and we were on a much more normal type of schedule. But mm -hmm. the thing about Japan and Tokyo is it, it gets light so early, you know, land of the rising sun. So it gets, <laughs> it gets it gets it gets sunrise is pretty early there, like five, five thirty. So you know, we were on a pretty pretty old people, senior citizen type of schedule. But yeah, Vlad was fantastic. Yeah, so Vlad actually wants to so You you should tell him by the way, you should tell him that we're gonna have a layover there. I really wanna do karaoke. We'll, we'll, we'll work My it big out. thing is karaoke. So I really want to do karaoke. We have a 10-hour layover in Tokyo on our way to Vietnam. And I really want to do Tokyo or karaoke around Shibuya area. I'm thinking about karaoke con. I know karaoke con in Shibuya was on Lost in Translation. Um, We don't need to be in By the, the way, Lost in Translation. By the way, if you've room. ever, for any of you film nerds out there, if you see Sofia Coppola's Lost in Translation, um, Tokyo is like really loud and active, but jet lag plus Tokyo equals this like dreamlike landscape where you can just like, seriously, you are just like looking and just seeing like this weird matrix of crazy. And it's like the most like surreal experience. And that's, a, that's my favorite thing about flying into Tokyo. It's like, you're so sleepy and jet lagged and you like get exploded onto this thriving like metropolis of activity and it is like some fairyland and especially when you arrive at night i think like yeah. when we so when we went to mm. okinawa we had a 24 hour ish <clears throat> layover in tokyo and we got a hotel in tokyo just because we were not proficient enough to handle a capsule hotel or doing like a karaoke room for that amount of time um we're much so, better travelers now though but still we got so we got a hotel and we had our hotel at hamamatsucho station for anyone who's familiar with tokyo and walking out like than had said while we were on the nex train from narita than had said like just wait just wait until you like walk yeah, out and now you're like actually on your own and you have to get to where you need to be and it's like 11 o'clock at night. And so there's like the drunk Japanese businessman. Yeah, so it was a Friday crawling night. Crawling out of the so, bars. Yeah, so it was like we were walking against the flow of the salary men coming home from their yeah. bar nights. So coming back from their like really unhealthy work-life balance <laughs> situation, its yes. own separate I issue. The, I can never remember the name of like the death by overwork. It has a name in Japanese. There's a, there's a <laughs> there's word a word. Is it like, like how like schadenfreude is like a very German word? <laughs> it's like there, there's a Japanese word for overworked death. Yes. Um, so so my favorite places to vacation and, the, the cool and visit in, all have terrible work-life balance The problems. cool thing about being in Tokyo in April, so the next morning we were able to just walk around a couple places in Tokyo, and we were able to catch some spring blossoms. Gorgeous. And Jarek's uh, CG60, yeah, you know. Like if you've been to Japan, it's like – as a, as a foreign gaijin visitor do you, do you remember when, so when we went this last time when we were there in november we went to himeji 
Himeji is a fairly small city, but what's special about Himeji is there is a samurai era castle. I don't know if it's Edo period. I'm not very good at my Japanese period, so please forgive me if I've misstated this, but it is a samurai era castle. It's mm -hmm. about 600 years old, and it's one of maybe a dozen or so that remain standing. A lot of them are rebuilt, but this one is original. And um, so Himeji is a fairly small city, we went there on the recommendation. So Lawson is an, works for an automotive supplier and one of his big customers is Nissan. So he sometimes talks to folks from Japan who are engineers there. So- See you later, Marine Hobby. Good night. <laughs> roundabout story. Um, this Japanese engineer that we met set, recommended that we go to Himeji and we happened to have a JR pass and were able to get a Shinkansen, a bullet train to Himeji and visit this castle, which I think was one of our best days. I mean, it was like one of those random things that we did, but it was one of our best days. So we went to Himeji and we went to the castle during fall color season and um, they had a combination ticket for this Japanese garden. We had no idea what that was, but I think it was like less than 50 cents extra to add on this To do the garden as well as the castle tour. So we did the combo ticket. We went through the castle, which was itself pretty amazing. So if you if you are in Tokyo and you can handle an, a day trip to Himeji, which is about... It's far four, away. It's like it, a four-hour Shinkansen ride. Yeah, because it's, it's past Kyoto, which is... Yeah, you're, you're talking about a four-hour train ride. But the cool thing is... So... I've like okay. Distracted myself. So the, the, the cool train thing, thing is its own story. Yeah. So, but in Himeji, so we stopped at this ekisoba shop, this noodle shop for lunch. Yeah. Which, like, eating in Japan is its own story. But yeah, so, you, you should go to Japan for the food alone. So we stop at this noodle shop, and um, Himeji is a small town. Um, but a lot of places have ego menu in English menu, or they have like picture menus that you can use, or they have like this vending machine ticket system where you can basically order by like photo. So we're like in there and of course the shop proprietors are trying to help us out because we're completely derpy. We're just like bumbling Americans. And one of the like 10 Japanese words I know is gaijin, which means foreigner. We, we okay, so we, we love that word. We so, love that word. So we're there and we're like- As in stupid gaijin. <laughs> so we're in there and we're like trying to order from this vending machine. And there's a bunch of construction workers and local people having lunch, which clues us into we're in the right place. But because we also because wh wh where the locals eat, like we we okay, think of your own racist example where that might apply. Yes. So we're there, and we. I feel kind of bad because I feel bad like disrupting these people, these local lunches. But we're also like trying to be respectful, and the proprietor comes up to us and like hands us this English menu and. I'm generally, I'll just order whatever because I'm not a picky eater. And I recommend that if you're in Japan, like just kind of be cool with what you're going to eat and be cool if it's not exactly what you were hoping for, because it's going to be delicious, first of all. And secondly, like, just be cool. I've ordered so, the wrong thing many times. <laughs> so there's this table like sitting there because it's kind of a small place. Like that's pretty typical. In it's Japan. a very typical Japanese place has like 10 seats or less. Yeah. So there's this table like with construction workers sitting there and like they are mumbling to themselves and the one word I recognize them say is gaijin. gaijin. <laughs> and I know they're talking about us and I was like insanely, like to this day, I am insanely curious like what they were saying, like if so, they hated us or if they were just like, what are these gaijin doing here? Like I just don't so know. So many people um, that are on this stream or will watch the stream in the future are familiar with Matt from, um, from China. Uh, Jayo Nation. Oh yeah, I think I've have I seen his. I think we've seen. Is he the South African? No. Oh no, no, he's the okay. American. But his friend also over there is South African. He okay. is. Um, he's another uh, China vlogger, and they talk about this bubble, and it's like the foreigner bubble when you're traveling overseas in that way, where everybody's like so nice and everything, right? Yeah. But. If you could understand the language, you would be offended <laughs> at how they're referring to you. And like, 
I am totally okay with being in like the foreigner bubble because like so so the sort of thing is like that that they that they they would hear in China is like stupid white monkey or something along those lines because you know those guys are you know they're they're Caucasian yeah, wait, men. Gai, gai is not really. A, it's not no, really gai, a nice Gaijin's word. not a got. It's not a nice word, but at the same time, it's not followed by white monkey either. <laughs> but <laughs> guys, I love Japan. Japan is hella racist. <laughs> Respect that because I feel like I there don't know. Hell, okay. I mean, I think I, it's like it's not that I respect that. I love know Matt what I, Texan boy twenty. Yeah, Matt, Matt, Matt's the man. I know what I am getting into when I go to Japan. We're not trying to be Japanese, yes. right? Well, and I think that that's. I think so. I have visited a few places in Europe, and I've been to Japan a few times recently. I think that the key is not so much to try to fit in because first of all you're not gonna when you look like me and you go to japan you are not going to fit in or blend in people are always going to ask you where you're from and pretty much so i can tell you when people speak english to me i don't understand them because i don't expect anyone to speak english remember when we were in that um at that vending machine restaurant by the hotel we were staying in and uh-huh. somebody was talking to me in english and <laughs> well, they were asking where you're from and you honest to god did not know I think that they're I just, trying like, to speak english not i like i was just like uh-huh like i just come <laughs> okay so what's bad is like so she's talking as like a caucasian female in japan right uh I stick out every bit as much as she does. <laughs> because you look Chinese. Because I am clearly not Japanese. But regardless, it, it's okay because we're not trying to be a part of the culture or anything. So one of our, our friends, she is, I, I would say, like in her 60s or close to 70s. Margaret. Margaret. She lives in Okinawa. Uh, she lives in Kyoto. Kyoto. And she takes Which us around everywhere. And she's... Also we're- an am- I'm, I know I don't think they watch your channel, but amazing host. She's fantastic. She's basically like like a travel channel level host, and so her so family. Lovely, lovely green tea. Yeah. My wazuka tea. Her family, no joke, is like ten generations Japanese, but that eleventh generation was from China. To this day, she's not really Japanese. So within five minutes of talking to like us, we've had deeper conversations about like religion, about politics that she's had with her closest friends forever because she's not really Japanese because like 10 generations of her family weren't really Japanese because it's great, 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 great grandfather was Chinese. Speaking of the Japanese being hella racist. Yeah, speaking but, of Japanese. Yeah. But I will say to, to the- So Americans, to, can you believe that for a second? Because like, I can't convince people in America that I'm not really American because I'm an American citizen. And, and even if I try to make the argument that I'm not American, which is like obviously ridiculous at this point, I'm clearly American, but they wouldn't buy it. Like I live in rural America and they wouldn't for one second believe I'm not American. But to speak about, to speak about <laughs> Just Margaret, and I just want to share a little bit about how they mm-hmm. showed us around Kyoto, just for folks that. So and yes, it's overtime, guys. You guys get you guys get a special. You get the, you get the beer special. <laughs> Lawson, she, Lawson's commenting. And Lawson is, totally is like ten here. feet away in the yes. kitchen, hanging out with the cats, <laughs> chatting. Yes. So um, okay. So Fan, I think, passed along to Margaret and her husband that we wanted to that we were that Lawson and I were interested in sake and I had done a little bit of research into sake I didn't know very much about it I'm very into wine and wine culture but I didn't know much about sake and so I I don't know if I caught wind that Kyoto is a very famous place for some sake breweries and that maybe if they could take us to some sake breweries that would be cool and um so the thing about going to japan you can go there if you don't have japanese if you don't have any japanese language skills you'll be fine you'll be fine but if you do have japanese language skills a whole new level of japan will be open to you a whole universe of opportunities just availed themselves yes so 
Than has these family friends and family connections, including Margaret and her husband, who took us around Kyoto. And it was so fantastic because they drove us around <clears throat> everywhere. And they took us to places that, as American tourists, we, one, wouldn't have thought to go, and two, would have had a very difficult time accessing because of our lack of Japanese skills, which I, you know, again, I don't want to discourage anyone from coming because they, of the language barrier. But if you have Japanese skills, like, holy shit, there's a lot. Sorry. Uh-oh, there's language. Lot, there's a lot Good of job, things Suzanne. you can do. <laughs> so, so, okay. If you have let, kids, let, let, like, me, let me set the stage, okay? So we stayed in Kyoto at this place called Kyoto Station, which is a train station there. It is an arch architectural marvel. We are staying at the hotel located in Tokyo, in Kyoto Station, called uh, the Granvia Hotel. Granvia. I was like, what's the name of it? Yeah. Five star hotel. So imagine this, okay? So as a tourist, you cannot get this as a Japanese national. You can get basically what is the golden oh, ticket. We're gonna talk about the trains. Yes. Okay. So if you're gonna go to Japan, you pay buy. Attention. You buy the JR Rail Pass. It's, it's mm -hmm. as if you had a golden ticket to fly anywhere in the U.S. You can hop on any flight that you wanted to travel anywhere in the U.S. that you wanted Except to. Except you can't get Nozomi trains. But that's just a timing thing. You can go to the geography anytime you yeah. want it, right? So just pay attention. If you are doing a JR Pass, just pay attention to where you want to go. So I mentioned Himeji, which is a four-hour trip from Tokyo. Um, Hiroshima is a great place to go, and it's about four hours from Kyoto, but so there are certain super high speed trains that are not available from every place. So if you're going to do a JR pass, just it doesn't gonna... matter because like, like in the grand scheme of things, okay, you're going to be going on a freaking bullet train that is like luxury to the max Yeah. for free as a part of your as a prepaid, JR pass. As a prepaid thing. I think we got probably like double the value of our pass. Clearly. Okay. So, um, if you were a Japanese national... Just like DM Than. If you want to go to Japan, DM Than, and he'll hopefully send we, it to yeah. me, and I'll help you. Well, we'll travel agent... Yes, we'll all, help you. All, all the things. Yeah, but anyway, bullet trains. Go ahead. So, imagine you wake up in the morning and in a five-star hotel, and you can literally roll out of your bed in anywhere in the country that you want to go. You can go within about three to four hours wherever you want that morning that is that is kyoto station you you can you, there's like infinite shopping there's like six malls a really good conveyor belt sushi there's anything you want within a walking distance of your hotel room or a shinkansen bullet train to anywhere else in the country that you want to go but know that you are are already in Kyoto, which is, you've already made it to one of the best destinations which was, ever. Which, other than the time that we spent with Margaret and the professor. And it's so was, good that we, we, we did do that because they actually took us away from the station to some rustic mountain. So uh, they, they drove us first. We went to a region called Wazuka. For tea. For green tea. Famous for tea. Yes, and so one of the cool things, so I have this fascination that developed a long time before I went to Japan, but is even more so when I went to Japan. I love manhole covers and how different cities have different manhole covers. And Japan really takes this because they do this with everything. I, like, I, I totally missed the context of what they're talking about. They're talking about Megyn Kelly. So, so what... I, I, I don't really know how that's all, relevant. Y'all do you. I really hope they're not talking about me. <laughs> I'm a whole lot less Republican than Megyn Kelly, but, you know, don't tell and, me. And a whole lot less fired than Megyn Kelly? Don't tell Please. me a lot from that. I'm less blonde than mm. Megyn Kelly. She, uh, she, A, she used to be extremely blonde. Yeah. Like, you, she used to be biologically blonde, and now she's dark-haired. Um. And she this worked. This is my natural hair color, by the way. This is a hundred percent natural hair color. When I was blonde, it was probably not. Uh, so, as an American, how tolerable are restaurants? Okay, mm. stop right there, Casper. Yes, let's okay. talk about this. So, Casper. Okay, well, let me tell you. We'll we'll serve the interest of chat. Okay. In our overtime section. Overtime, here. yes. 
Um, if you're interested in a particular type of cuisine. Like, wait, let's talk about type of cuisine. What do you mean by type of cuisine when you talk about Japanese? Because literally, if you were interested in Italian food, let's say, or Spanish food, <clears throat> the... Well, so so the, the, this, this, this is the racist wait, stereotype wait, wait, of Japanese. Wait, wait, wait. Here's like what I was thinking. I was thinking, are you talking about sushi? Are you talking about tempura? What are you I'm talking about? I'm talking about freaking Western cuisine now. Okay? They First are... First of all, why are you going to Japanese for Western cuisine? You can. Yeah, but why? They're so good. If, you're want, if you want Italian food, just go to Italy. No. Sorry. You can no. go to Japan. Because I'm, I've been to Italy. I don't know that Than has. I'm going to go ahead and veto Than on this one. Italy is a banana republic. Okay. But so, Italy is good at Italian food. So the, the, the Japanese as like a culture are so yeah. like detail oriented, especially when it comes to food, that you could literally have like a pizza there that blows the socks off of anything you could have in Chicago or New York. Like they are it's like the best Western Spanish food. food. So Casper wants to know Western food does it exist in Japan? Heck was saying yeah. yes, it does. Hell yeah! Like the best burger I might ever have could be in Tokyo. But I, so yes, I think Japanese. So one you thing you shouldn't about, order a hamburger in Japan just because there's like legit like like a so here, next level sushi and next level Japanese. Here's cuisine. what I think about Japanese and Western cuisine. Japanese culture, just J Japanese culture generally is very good at taking something that someone else does and, and perfecting and it. And refining it to like a super high level. That's kind of like a Japanese thing. And if you look at Japanese manufacturing in terms of like product, like cars, for example. So just because Japanese OCD, they make great food. Yes. Yes. But so they they do talk, all the little things right. But if you talk about like Japanese cuisine, so let's talk about like sushi tempura right like like how can a raw fish be different noodles. In, in 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 like ohio it's a raw piece of tuna versus a raw piece of tuna in tokyo well there's a lot of things there's to a, there's, there's a really there's big a difference. lot of things to unpack there and let's start with skiji market so let's start with the fact that the tuna comes from like tokyo bay the tuna comes from a place that's adjacent to tokyo it comes from the pacific ocean so getting that fish to Ohio, you've got to think about first, how fast is that fish well, getting there? Well, strangely, they, so to be like food safe, yeah. you have to freeze tuna for X number of days anyway. Okay. So theoretically, that could happen in transit. But just wait, here. is that a USDA food rule? Um, I think it, it's it's kind of like a, a generally known thing about sushi. So, so the stuff that we're actually eating in Tokyo isn't like they slice off a living fish all of that does happen. I was going to say, doesn't that happen? That totally happens. <laughs> but like, if you if you were or to order tuna sashimi at Skiji, Skiji Market, it might not be like that animal was breathing salt water but five first, minutes before. But first, can we have just a second to talk about how awesome Sushi Dai was? Um, we went to a three-star Michelin but uh, sushi restaurant. But it's not three-star Michelin currently. It's right. It's on, sushi, uh, on Michelin's Bib Gourmand only because it's only thirty dollars to have a ten course meal there. Yeah, it so is Michelin, every Michelin, bit of three star Michelin. It has at one time, I believe, been a Michelin three star, but Michelin has sort of changed their only because of the pricing. It is every bit three star Michelin. If you guys are foodies out there. And I have to say for the foodies out there, I don't necessarily like I think Michelin the Michelin guide is exactly that. I think it's a guide. I think it's a good point of reference. But I also think that finding things, like, so Bib Gourmand is something that Michelin has said, this is an excellent value and this is something that we recommend. Right, but, but part of the evaluation of a three-star restaurant is that it's exclusivity based on price. Mm -hmm. And I get that. So here's the thing. Okay. I'm sorry, any place that I have to wait in line for five hours to get into... And I, it's can't probably make, I gonna, cannot make a reservation. They don't take reservations, there. yeah. That is fucking exclusive. And when there's... Language! Like, oh, sorry. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear nothing. <laughs> Over time. Over time. <laughs> Over time. Yeah. Um, it's Swenson's Akron. You know what? Swenson's is good. Don't get me wrong. Nate loves Swenson's. Nate loves Swenson's. Nate loves him some Swenson's. So, but here's the thing. Like, uh, 
I, I New Orleans have... Cajun. Oh yeah, we could we could have a whole overtime episode on that. We're just like on a Japan kick. Boss right and now. Suzanne are the mayors. We love of New, Orleans. New Orleans. We can talk about New Orleans. We love that. Stan has had some amazing times with us in New Orleans. <laughs> and Lawson's like reporting. It's like this is live, girl. YouTube ban. <laughs> Dude, okay. Oh, because, so, of, because of my F bomb. <laughs> yes. I have been to Sukiyabashi Jiro, um, three star Michelin in, restaurant. In Rohingya? Uh, Rapongi. Rapongi. Rohingya is oh, where my people thing. are co co committing Let's... a genocide. So if, 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 if ever you thought that Buddhist people are like all, all chill, <laughs> well, they're currently killing all these Muslims in Burma, my home country. Anyway. Side story. You're, you're currently part of the w winning team. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, back to Japan. Back to Japan. Um, so not not that not that Japan is perfect, but if you guys are looking for like if you guys are like looking for training wheels Asian vacation, nothing is better than Japan. Nothing. It is the most on rails vacation experience for the dopest cuisine shopping cultural experience that you are literally you, like you okay here's here's the fun part Start you don't you don't need to speak japanese but at the same time english can't get you by yeah. so it's exotic well, especially, enough especially to be talking, an adventure especially if you're talking about tokyo or you're talking about major tourist sites um I think that the part on rails that Fan is referring to is that petty crime in Japan is non-existent. Zero. And I think that there are some, if you really care about like socio-political issues and why petty crime is not an issue in Japan, there are maybe some dark reasons why that is the case. But if you are an American visiting Japan, you don't have to worry about pickpocketing. You don't have to worry about impossible. A lot of petty you will. Crime. You will so I don't. I don't know the set of facts that you would have to do. Like. I'm pretty tipsy right now. If I just went out at, at midnight in Tokyo, okay, saying, please mug me, like big signs, tourist, please mug me, I and, will not get mugged. And I think a big part of the reason for that, and I'm just going to speculate is because here. everybody is 99% criminally convicted. No, the idea that, is that the that's, that's Yakuza true, the sort of control the criminal enterprises in major Japanese cities. So, and Japanese culture, generally speaking, is one about uh, what, where do you belong in society and what is right. your role like, in society and so, doing so, what you are supposed to do, kind of like staying in your lane. Right, true, because it's like, in America, we value individualism over the collective. But in a lot of Asian countries, the collective supersedes the individual. So your, your value or your merit as an individual actually has to do with your ability to mesh in the global collective yeah. of the culture. So like um, it, it's, it's, it has its own issues because neither, neither system in its purest form is perfect. Yes. So one of the books that I read before we went to Japan or around the time we were going to Japan was the Shogun book. Mm -hmm. And the Shogun series, I think, has a lot of, like, racist and sexist things, and I, I'm not necessarily endorsing it here. But what I will say about it is that it talks about Westerners going into Japanese culture before Japanese culture really had a lot of exposure to Westerners. And I think one of the things that they talk about that one of the themes of the Shogun series, for anyone who has read it, is this idea of um, the difference between Japanese society and this idea of, like, you have a role and you, whatever your place is, is more important, the collective over the individual. Clearly. And Western society, I, and I wouldn't say this is, like, unique to Americans, but generally this idea of Western society thinking of this individual, whatever you do as an individual matters. And I right. think in Japan, it's much more like, are you doing what you are supposed to? And I think even we, we talked about this to Margaret and the professor. Mm -hmm. We talked about them. I think we talked to them a lot about our perceptions. And I think this was the, 
The best thing about having local hosts, to me, besides like the amazing things that they can expose us to, that we wouldn't be able to experience on our own, is this idea of getting to have those conversations about what is your culture all about and what is our culture all about and we can kind of talk from our own perspectives as members of that culture how we perceive our own cultures and i think like talking to margaret and her husband about how they perceive japanese culture was very enlightening and very enriching and to me that's like the coolest part about travel is when you can sort of experience someone else's life a little bit and so uh, the other thing that you can also see it's, it's not just about like oh you're you're with your like hippie friends smoking a doobie and like pontificating on the possibilities we were drinking coffee by the way because <laughs> margaret had an amazing friend who took us to her coffee shop and her this yeah. is the one week's time that we had to, i just feel like I have to share this. This was so cool. When we were in the coffee shop with Margaret's family, mm -hmm. with Margaret's friend. Yeah. And her granddaughters were there. And they're like middle schoolers and they're Japanese. And they really wanted to take our photos. And take we photos, like selfies with us. Because yes, we were so exotic. So, so that was the one experience where we had that feeling of like having a Japanese person like want to take our picture as Westerners. But I tried to, I wanted to have a conversation with them because I was asking them, do they speak English? Do they learn English in school? And they wouldn't, they were kind of shy with us and they wouldn't really talk about it. But, um, so I felt like letting them take a photo with us was sort of the thing that we could do to give something to them because they yeah. were so generous with us but it was kind of it was kind of funny because they're in kyoto in sort of a neighborhood like in this sort of non-wet non-touristy yeah. place real quick uh casper than do you smoke weed or eat edibles i've done both <laughs> before it's not my thing to do regularly at all like what what so for for all the other other people's very positive experiences with those, I just get really stupid. It's not my thing at all. Um, it's 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 other people's gig entirely. But oh shit, where where was I thinking about going with that? The Is cultural that the right? thing and Shogun and the collective. That's kind of where I was. I guess. Um. Yeah. No. So. So here's here's the thing. It's like some sometimes people speculate about how cultural paradigms can be different, different from what they experience on a day to day basis. So a lot of like younger people that that I've talked to haven't had the opportunity to travel to other cultures and other essentially other completely different civilizations and they don't know what it's like to be outside of America. Um, and by the way, sometimes I, I'm ultra critical of America because I live here. And so it, it's very local to me. It, not that any of the other places I've been to are not past criticism because I vacation there, obviously, right? So and, and when you're on vacation, it's like your, your filter for BS is way lower. Well, like, I like love you, Mexico, like, right? I think how you experience a place as a tourist is not Totally different. Yeah, exactly. But you can talk to people that live there on a day-to-day -day basis, and you see how that philosophy that is different from your local philosophy really impacts what it really means as a, as a matter of, of political policy. And that's very intriguing because, like, we're, we're talking about all the differences with, uh, with what we've experienced as a vacationer in Japan talking to Japanese locals. And I talk about Singapore as a tourist talking about a working dictatorship, guys. The exact op – so, so I'm, I'm not somebody that's coming at this angle from, oh, I, I – I think dictatorships are cool. No, yeah. dude, I went to freaking law school in the United States. So, for example... I know a whole lot about the Constitution of the United States of America. So I and I kind of like it. So, I don't feel crazy about visiting Dubai, for example. You should, a little bit more than me, but okay. No, but like, so one of the problems... Any, I any Dubai people? By the way, there's, there, there is a healthy Middle Eastern following on, on this YouTube channel. That's so. actually great, because I... 
I really want to talk about this. And I think that I have a respectful way of conveying this. So I'm not crazy about visiting Dubai. And part of the reason for that is because I have sort of a philosophical slash moral objection to visiting a place that bans alcohol as a general proposition. I understand that tourists can drink alcohol in Dubai. I understand that. But I think like I just don't like a place that is some level of religious dictatorship. Um, Lawson and Suzanne, uh, Lawson is probably asleep somewhere <laughs> at this point, but they actually grew up as Seventh Day Adventist, which is very like you know like theologically driven. Oh boy, now we're getting now we're getting real deep. <laughs> I will only touch on that. So you know, there's definitely this. You know, like it, it, it's probably not in her cup of tea or my cup of tea to be a part of a place that is like actually a theocracy, yes. like Dubai. Yes. Yes. But so Dubai is like of, so glamorous. Yes. So I think that there's a lot of cool things going on in Dubai <clears> and <throat> I um I'm open to experiencing and seeing those things, but I also feel like So two people here, J Reg and Casper are like, Dubai is great if you're a man. <laughs> yes, okay, well yeah, maybe you can see, you maybe you can't. I am a woman, I was born I'll that be way. Right back. Back. <laughs> so yeah, I just I don't know. I just like I have some concerns about that and theocracy is part of it. And I think also this whole idea of a patriarchy and a very entrenched patriarchy. And I know that the U.S. has a lot of issues right now. So I'm sympathetic to that. <laughs> yeah, Than just took a bathroom break, TDW. <laughs> so I'm here on my own talking about corals and travel and religion and theocracies. What's dabs? Somebody enlighten me. Is this is this a marijuana thing? I don't know. Roger, what's dabs? What do you mean by that? And I'm back. <clears throat> Everyone, Casper's impressed with a new bladder. It's like this guy this was... <laughs> Has Than ever done dabs? I have not. What is dabs? I think it's I like I was a... asking about this and no, like, no one helped me out. I was um... like, what are you guys talking about? I'm here alone talking about theocracy and <laughs> being drunk. Uh, it's like, uh... wait, hold on. Uh, this show is comparable to Matt's <laughs> featured show. Uh, dabs are, yeah, it's basically. Yeah, I want to concentrate. Thanks. Yeah, it's like you're basically like free basing weed. I'm going to go with no. Than has not done that. Than? I, I, I have not done that. All right. I'm pretty sure that I've been there from a lot of Than's marijuana <clears throat> experiences or been adjacent to many of Than's marijuana experiences. Um, <laughs> oh, Piper came back. Oh, Piper Kitty. Mew, mew, mew. <laughs> All right, I feel like we're I feel like we're wrapping it up, Than. I, I think we're 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 getting close, guys. <sighs> Dicanthus is mentioning Labyrinth as a musical. Okay, what what's the details on that, Dicanthus? Can you just share that? Who's producing it? Is it going to be on Broadway? Where can I find it? Do I need to go to New York for this? I want to see Labyrinth as a musical. And I don't know how it can be the same without David Bowie. He did pass away, didn't he? This is like the okay, bummer it was 2016. stream. 2016. I mean, I, I don't think we should go there. I feel like we, <laughs> so, we'll, we'll talk about that offline. I miss Prince, too. Yeah, let's talk about that offline. And Takashi Amano. <laughs> I didn't give a fuck about talking. Dude, language. Jesus. This potty mouth in this girl. I don't have kids. Oh man. This so is not a kid like I, video. I swear like a sailor, guys. Like I I I know I've told you guys all this. These guys know this. And I still manage to not do it on stream. I'm sorry. Dude. I'm getting, having a great time getting 
faded and listening to Chinese. So this, this turned into like this international, uh, like a international cultural podcast. I understand sorts. it's a reproduction of the movie, but where can I find it? Who's doing it? Okay, they almost have. Who's they? Who's producing it? Who are the people? They Tell me more. Have, they almost have the score done. Three yeah. bombs. I think I only counted two. Two f bombs. I think I said the s word too. Um, you know what? See, this is what I love. This is what I love about doing live streams, guys. Even even when I'm when I'm completely drunk here, it is. A, I don't appear very often, and this is like this is an epic level. I swear, me ten times more than she does in real life. Doubtful. Clearly true, because she works in a professional environment. I work in a hostile work environment of I, my own creation. I work for. I work in a swear friendly environment. <laughs> Uh, J-Reg is like, I, I'm a retired sailor. I'm like a sailor with Tourette's. I want a boat. I want a boat. By the way, like, we should talk, we should digress into that. Where's Lawson? Is Lawson on this? Is Lawson's Lawson still, passed out. Is Lawson still monitoring this? Because I really want a boat. So, so they grew I'm like, up. I'm on live stream. They grew up boat. next to a body of fresh water. And somehow oh, we still they. still live near a body they, of fresh water? So they think it's a good idea to get a boat. And so they are very financially conscious. They want to be retired by the age of 50. I'm like, a boat is the dumbest thing you can ever buy in your whole life. And they have this connection like to like water. Super chat Than. But it's, like, you... but it's like fake water. It's like fresh water. Super chat Than if you think we should buy a boat. Most of the time, uh, two F bombs and an S bomb. So people keep me score. See, that's what I said. That, well, that's what is I said. Is that a crushed velvet jacket? This yeah, this it's jacket. It's not crushed. It's, it's not like crushed. Fresh, it is fresh velvet. It's like um, it, it is a fabric made by Holland and Sherry, uh, by a custom clothier here in town. Um, it's not cheap. But it's 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 very nice. You should if if, if you have the means and and I'm yes, making. Yes, I understand. Boats are a money pit. I don't care. Boats Still, are stupid. Floating RV. Yep, I'm on board with that. So far, nobody it's has like, said anything to deter me. D -d -d -d. <laughs> Super chat fan. If you think we should buy a boat. <laughs> Boats are stupid, y'all. You should if, if you wanted to. Get, Fan wants we we have we have some very affluent friends, okay, and they have like yacht money, but do they don't mean, buy what yachts. Mean, what do you mean by that? What? <laughs> we have yacht money. You don't have yacht money. Oh, who about, has yacht money? Uh, um, uh, somebody that might own like a a major telecommunications internet company that oh. I might have gone to college with. Oh yeah, yeah. He but, has he, yacht but, money. He, but he lives in a place where houses cost yacht money. Cost yacht money. He's a billionaire. Yeah. I, I've got another friend locally in town, and he has, like, airplane money, like, private plane money. We definitely don't have that, but I think we do have boat money. Unless it's a house, boat boat equals break out another hey, thousand. Hey, two please came back. Yes, I've heard that. I've heard that. I've also heard that it's a hole in the water that you throw money into. It's true. Aquarium is a box of water you throw money into. Boats are a floating box. Yeah, except that you can make money off of your aquarium tank, like like this guy right here. I feel like we could start a YouTube channel about our boat life. I'd rather spend boat money on aquariums. See, you're in the wrong crowd, sister. Yeah, both are super stupid. Chatting. I'm trying to get you some super But you chatting. guys, yeah, you know what? You know, hold, hold on, hold on. I think, I think. Yes, I've heard that too. The day you buy it and the day you sell it. Yep, I've best. heard that. Yeah, the best two days of a boat owner's life. Yeah, I've heard that. Okay, so Deacanthus Reef is all about the, all about the theater life. <laughs> yes, so we want to go see the production of my father-in-law has plain money at Than. So okay, oh, th th this yeah. is hilarious. Okay, so one of, one of my friends in town, um, Al has Uber money. He has he has plain money. Okay, and he's a pilot of thirty years. He has plain money. Nice. And so Suzanne, bless her heart, she was like, when he buys his new G six. Let's have him take us places and we'll pay for gas for the G6. And I'm like, G6 gas money is like 60 grand. We don't got G6 gas money to go nowhere. <laughs> I mean, we could. No, we couldn't. We're not, we ain't got it like that. We, we, we need, that, we need, we need uh, some, a lot more YouTube super chat money to get to that, <laughs> that D6 private well, gas I mean, how money. How far will 60 grand of G6 money get us? 
that could get you to a lot of places. By the way, you're talking about a sixty million dollar. Sixty price. million? I thought you said sixty thousand. No, no, no. The, the 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 gas is sixty grand. Okay. The, the the plane is sixty million. Oh, I thought we were just paying gas money. We are paying gas money. How sixty grand in gas money? Well, divided by three of us, we can pay that. <sighs> we're not that rich. I mean, Than could do it. We are. I'm not that rich. G6 it. Philip is 72k. Exactly, Casper. Can you get Amex points for that? Yes, I can get Amex points for that. It's not the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Craze's Reef. GTG, great show. Good night, Fort sir. Fort Lauderdale. Okay, so we love South, La South Florida. <laughs> That's I have a the Trojan only theory. way to own a boat. Okay, I, I, I live on I live on Lake Michigan. Oh, who's this? Who's this? Hall where two you, JC. Where do you live on Lake Michigan? I'm a Michigander. Where on Lake Michigan? So these guys are uh, near uh, near Holland. Near uh, Grand Rapids. No, no, no. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. They used you're like totally calling us out. You just like just reading our address. Online. They used to have a place in Grand Haven, like near Grand Haven. Michigan. Yeah, we sold it last we summer. We sold it. Fan. We sold it to potentially buy a boat. Dude, buying a boat on fresh water is some, some BS right there. You need a boat to get your corals. No. I think. No boat means. Uh, no Hall 2 coral, JC needs to right? talk to us more. Yeah, Hall 2 JC. I, I, I've seen you before. Buy a boat. Yes. Buy a boat. There best you go. Super chat. Super best chat, Fan. Ever. Grand Haven. All right. Super, uh, Grand super Haven. chat, Fan. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <clears throat> Super chat then, and we'll, uh, we'll you send you a photo of our boat. We'll buy one. We've got like three in the running. <laughs> no. This is a bad financial advice right here. <laughs> not a financial advice website. Yeah, this is not a financial advice show. Grand Haven. Nice. Hall 2 JC. So we lived uh, just north of Grand Haven. We had a place just north of Grand Haven that was about uh, four miles from Huffmaster State Park. And we sold it last year just because it was... Not a great cottage, not a great rental property, and we kind of thought that we could do better. Is If there isn't a reef, there ain't no... There I ain't, ain't there for longer than a week. Yes, true. There you go. Yeah. Reefs matter, guys. I like this Hall 2 JC, though. Come come back and talk to Thane more often, even when we're not here. A boat's a bad idea, guys. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's okay. You know what? Like in the next three to five years, you'll see Fan on our boat and he'll do a YouTube video and it'll happen. So you can get like parasites from fresh water. Whatever. Lake Michigan is like an inland sea. It's an inland sea. So it, 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 what, we mean, what we mean by sea is like lack of salt water and replace it with parasites that work on human biology. <laughs> to two please stand I have a boat for like 12 years now and use it a handful yeah, of times yeah see Casper says freshwater boat maintenance is way cheaper than blue water boats because everybody dies early what <laughs> they get like tapeworm or something no no saltwater boats require like a diver to go scrape the barnacles off the bottom of your boat and all that sort of things <laughs> stuff boats and freshwater actually make sense saltwater destroys them Oh, yes, see, yeah, Hall 2JC brain... is like my person. But, but, but J-Reg knows. He's a sailor. He's where's like the, where's brain, brain yes, eating amoeba. Yes, Haven. So, Hall 2JC, we're thinking about a marina on Muskegon Lake because you're familiar with the West Michigan area. That's what we're thinking about. I can't believe that we've actually recycled. So, overtime has gone through 81 corals yeah, so far. We should, we should stop this. Yeah, we, we actually need to get dinner soon, guys, but... But we know we love the fact Walter that you guys are hanging out. probably eat all our food. That's a, that's a, that's a sobering thought. <laughs> all right, we should probably get to dinner. Thank you all for participating in the Halloween live sale. Like expected, it's gone off the rails. Who knows where her husband is? He hasn't, he hasn't said a peep, so clearly he's not online. He's sleeping or he ate all He's either sleeping, he's passed out from food coma. 
we, we, we talked about geopolitical things about Asia. We've talked about now boat life, apparently. <laughs> about how bad of an idea that is. How wonderful an idea that is. And I am probably out of calories and am out of even alcohol calories. So hopefully you guys got your fill of coral behind us. I, we, I realize I haven't talked about it in like an hour or two. Um, yeah, saltwater. Yes, saltwater. I, I, I see you, Muskegon. Oh, just got back at there. Yeah, good food. Yes, right. Dockers. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you all for joining us. Please excuse the vulgarity of my guests. They're clearly amateurs at this whole thing. But I appreciate you all. Love you. Super chats real quick. Thank you, Lee Tate, too, please. K-Town Reefer and Jeffrey C.E. Brandon Ellis, Ernie Wallace. You guys get it? Uh, and yeah. Patreons. Those are the those are the, the Patreon crowd. You guys have been shouted out now three times because of because of overtime. Thank you so much. You all all make this possible. Um, yeah. And uh, most of the shipments will probably go out Monday. Some will go out Tuesday. FYI, you all will be receiving emails. Have a happy Halloween, y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night.